Broadcasting live, it's the Friday Night Football Zone. Brought to you by your local McDonald's of Bluffton and Hilton Head. Only on WHHI TV. Welcome to the McDonald's Bridge Bowl pregame show. My name is Tim Wood here alongside my color commentator for the Friday Night Football Zone, Chuck Zapek. Good to be here tonight, Tim. Good, good to be here at McDonald's here on the south end of Hilton Head Island. We're here with John Palmacio, the owner and operator of the Bluffton uh, Hilton Head and Hardyville McDonald's. How are you, sir? Very nice to be here. Glad to be part of the team. Nice to have you here tonight, John. Pleasure, pleasure to be here. We really appreciate you having us. Oh, well, we're glad that you guys could be here. Glad to be part of the program. So, and now, I understand that you played a little bit of high school football yourself, and that led to some of the interest of being the sponsor of the Friday Night Football Zone. Yes. Um, back on Long Island, New York, I uh, was an outside linebacker and a tight end. Uh, played for a team called the Seahawks. <laughs> it, it wasn't the Hilton Head Seahawks, uh, but but it was the same team. And when approached with the opportunity, I was glad that we can help. My wife and I, uh, Monique, uh, both very into sports, into anything we could do to help uh, young students to uh, build their futures. And I found that through sports, we were able to really learn a lot about discipline and teamwork, uh, which carry through to the business that we're in today. McDonald's and high school sports actually seem just seem like a perfect fit, and you. You guys have been I'm so loving it. Yeah, me too. <laughs> uh, you guys have been so involved in the community around here, and, and uh, so what brought you into the sponsorship as far as as far as sponsoring the football? Well, I understood there was a need, and I've always had um, a strong feeling towards getting involved in the local communities that that give us business. We like to give back to it. Uh, so getting involved with the high school is a natural fit, and we've been looking for a reason and a way how. And this was the first of many steps that we'll be taking in the future. Now you, this this building that we're sitting in is recently renovated recently completely rebuilt right yes and thanks for noticing we uh, last year we rebuilt this entire location with a huge indoor play place uh, with a, a double side-by-side -side drive through and hopefully what you'll find to be a very nice creative and up-to-date new dining package which we felt this restaurant was in need of it's fantastic the lighting the TVs the playground uh, my son's actually in the playground right now. <laughs> so uh, we're going to come back, talk plenty more about McDonald's. We're going to talk about the uh, Bluffton Hilton Head game coming up, of course. We'll do all that when we come back on the McDonald's Bridge Bowl pregame show here on WHHI-TV. You're watching the Friday Night Football Zone on WHHI-TV. Brought to you by your local McDonald's restaurant of Bluffton and Hilton Head. Been in a wreck? Bring your car to H and H Auto Body at 17 Cardinal Road. At H and H Auto Body, you'll get a free estimate in their state-of-the-art facility. No matter the damage, the great team at H and H Auto Body will have your car looking great and back on the road in no time. I guess there's stars and then there's superstars. Um, I'm bringing value to the team. I think that's what's most, it was the most, yeah. You bring my um, dumps? Yeah. Got you right here, baby. Uh, are you bringing value? That's what I'm bringing to the team. Now at McDonald's, get a double cheeseburger extra value meal for only $2.99. That's a 100% all beef double cheeseburger, a medium fries and a medium Coke. We get really hungry around here. And when that happens, I go get the food.
Welcome back to the McDonald's Bridge Bowl pregame show here on WHHI TV. Tim Wood, Chuck Zapek, and we are here to talk some Bridge Bowl rivalry football between the Hilton Head Island Seahawks and the Bluffton Bobcats. Big game tonight, Chuck. It is, too. The Bobcats have yet to win the Bridge Bowl, Tim, and the winner of this contest will end up in second place guaranteeing them a home playoff game once the playoffs start next week. You know, both sides of the both sides of the bridge want this rivalry to actually be a rivalry, but you can't really have a rivalry until both teams win it and there's actually something on the line, right? Oh, you're right too. And uh, the, that not only is it this year, but next year they're going to be playing uh, beginning of the season, the end of the season, so they're, they're going to develop this rivalry uh, to start the season and finish the season for the next two years. So it'll be something for us to watch here on the Friday Night Football Zone. Hilton Head Island comes in 5-4, and 3-1 and one in region play. Bluffton comes in 3-6, and six, but 2-2 two and two in region play. A lot on the line for tonight's game. So-called experts say this might this has the makings of being the closest bridge bowl yet. Let's hear what the coaches have to say as far as their keys for tonight's game. I tell you what, we have our work cut out for us this weekend. You know, uh, the coaches and I are been sitting around planning a lot of different things and watching Bluffton uh, operate offensively. They are a tough ball club to stop. They're going to run the ball and run the ball and run the ball. And I don't know how we're going to stop them. It's going to be a tough night for us with that. Um, defensively, I think they probably have the best defense in the region. So it's going to be a difficult night for the Seahawks. You know, whether we end up victorious or not, I don't think it's going to be given to us. So Bluffton has a lot going for them right now. They've won some close games. All right, keys to the game, we uh, we got to play discipline on defense, make open field tackles. Uh, be it, be make sure we line up right to their formations. Uh, Coach Singleton do a good job of finding mismatches and taking advantage of us. Offense, we got to continue to run the ball um, and uh, take what they give us on defense. Uh, can't miss any assignments up front, and we got to go to the whistle blows because their defense flows real well and uh, they make plays on defense. Uh, one of the most improved defenses in the region, and they're playing at the top of their game right now. So we got to be ready on offense. And uh, offensively, they're as good as any offense we've seen all year. And defensively, we got to be ready to go to. So there's the coach's keys to the game, Chuck. This is a, I mean, there's always a lot on the line for this Bridge Bowl as far as bragging rights. But there is a lot on the line as far as playoff implications tonight. Winner of this game, second place in the region, gets a home playoff game. And Tim, a lot of people are going to be watching the perimeter players and also the quarterback play, but what I'm going to be watching and enjoying watching this game is the interior line play. We have some outstanding players for both teams. Number 71, Philip Scott for the Bluffton Bobcats. He's been playing, playing offensive tackle both ways. He's really the guy to watch inside to come up and be the playmaker for that Bluffton defense. And then on the other side of the ball, you have Jack Dwayne. He's an all-state wrestling champion. He plays linebacker along with uh, a couple other good linebackers for the Seahawks. So the hand-to-hand -hand combat in between the tackles is, I think, where the game's going to be won. So Hilton Head is in the playoffs already, but they win tonight. They clinch second place and clinch that home playoff game. Bluffton has to win tonight to to control their destiny. They win tonight. Their second place in the play, second place in the playoffs will have their first ever home playoff game, first under Jeremy West as well, and, and that, that's and, amazing. And we're going to see a contrast in styles, particularly offensively. You have uh, both teams started the season with a different quarterback than they have playing to, uh, tonight, Tim. So uh, they had to make adjustments. Typically it takes offenses, as you know, a longer time to, uh, to adjust and get going. But now both offenses are playing very well. So we've got a wing T offense running the flex bone from Bluffton. Uh, we've got a passing offense uh, and, a, and a multiple formation offense at a Hilton Head High. So we're going to be seeing these coaches implementing their strategies which have been developed all season long. Both teams have played rather well defensively. Um, uh, not against North Charleston. That seems to be the only team that's really clobbered uh, their defenses. But we watched Bluffton earlier in the year, even though they lost the first lost the first three games of the year, their defenses played well. Once they got the quarterback situation squared away, then, then they started make, uh, being competitive and winning games. Desmond Jenkins is your quarterback. And we, as you said, we've seen switches at the quarterback position for both teams. Ryan Combs started the year for Bluffton. They went to Desmond Jenkins. That worked for them. Jeff Homad started the season for the Seahawks, played one game. They went to another another quarterback, John Beaver. Seemed to work out, but he, he left the team. 
Jeff Homad comes back in, and they've been lights out ever since. Yep, they have too. They've, they've uh, really have uh, developed that offense. Tim Sillington, the head coach of the Seahawks, likes to be able to throw the ball on every down if possible. He lines up and he has that passing threat. But as you know, you want to look like you're going to throw and be able to run the football, and that's what he's been able to do. Good offensive line for the Seahawks, are, uh, and I think that's one of the reasons why the, they are 5-4 and four in, in uh, second place in the region. And we've seen both these teams plenty check this year. What do you see? Uh, you, said, you said the line play. Other than that, what do you see is going to be the difference, the key difference in this game? Defense. It's going to be, it's going to be defense. Can the Seahawks from Hilton Head High defend against the flex bone that's run by, uh, by Bluffton? Some people call it the wing, wing T. And whether or not they can defend from the inside out. When you run that flex bone, you start off with a dive to the fullback. You want to be able to bottle it up inside, take away the pitch to the outside, and make the quarterback run with the ball inside. And that's really the key for the Seahawks tonight, if they can make that quarterback pull the ball down and run with it. So we are here at the McDonald's on the south end of Hilton Head Island. We uh, recommend that you all come out to this spot. This is probably the, the, the premier Cadillac McDonald's that I've seen in the southeast. Playground, television. Well, I'm enjoying my, oh, my decaf coffee. What do you got there, Tim? I, I got a little. I got a little. It looks like there's a few more calories than I have in my cup. A little, I don't know. A little bit. I got a mocha mix from the McCafe. Oh, okay. A new addition with with this McDonald's and all the McDonald's around the Low Country, thanks to yeah. John and Monique. And I got to meet your son today. He's over in the playground. Oh my gosh, too. he's he's loving loving the playground, <laughs> loving it for sure. So uh, we'll come back. We'll talk some some more uh, keys to the game as we see it. Uh, we'll do all that when we come back here on the McDonald's Bridge Bowl pregame show. On WHHI-TV. You're watching the Friday Night Football Zone on WHHI-TV. Brought to you by your local McDonald's restaurant of Bluffton and Hilton Head. Welcome to the Blind Cake Saloon. Come in and enjoy an American upscale bar with the best in dancing, live music, two full bars, billiards lounge, and the best bar food in Bluffton. So whether you're coming in to hang out and have a beer, or if you're ready for a night out on the town, come on in and see what the buzz is all about at the Blind Pig Saloon. Hi, I'm Larry O'Sullivan. And I'm Brad O'Sullivan. And we're O'Sullivan Equipment and Supply. We are your number one source for any and all of your janitorial equipment and supply needs. We specialize in equipment and supplying hospital and healthcare, warehouse, industrial, and commercial cleaning businesses. We remedy all continuous cleaning service needs including all floor types, windows, water damage, odor, and mildew. For the absolute best prices on equipment and supplies anywhere, please contact Larry or Brad O'Sullivan. We, we will, will save you money, money and, and time. time. Whether you want a healthier home, have high energy bill concerns, need to schedule a repair, or are ready for system maintenance, go to Mark's Heating and Cooling, where their success is due to a great staff, a few sound business principles, lots of technical training, and an honest desire to please. Give them a call at 681-2350 or go to their website, MarksHeatingAndAir.com. And while you're there, cast your vote for the local charity that you would like to see win this month's $500 donation. When you call, they'll be there. Mark's Heating and Cooling. Tim Wood, Chuck Zapek up here in the booth at the Hawks Nest, Bridge Bowl 4. You feeling it, Chuck? I tell you, there was a big game atmosphere just walking into the stadium tonight, Tim. You can tell that this, these teams are ready to play. All a lot on the line, as, as we said in the pregame show. Even more so, uh, f the word from Bluffton is, is they're going to just empty the playbook tonight <laughs> and Tim Singleton you know he's going to do the same thing well these teams have been looking forward to this game all year Tim let's go down on the field and see some action let's do it we are ready for action here Bridge Bowl 4 Hilton Head Island has owned the series thus far and they will own the kickoff short kickoff to start at the 25 take it out to the 30 out to the 40 45 50 and great field position for the Seahawks to begin Bridge Bowl 4. 
Or they come out on the field in those Penn State blue colors. You know I like that one, Tim. They're going to be lined up at over center with Forrest Bryan, number 52. The right guard, Jack Dwayne. Wolf was number 62 is going to be in there. Right tackle is going to be Marcus Johnson, number 99. Left guard, Zachary Kiertze. And the left tackle, Hunter Anderson. And that's who Jeff Homar is going to be lined up behind. Joe, Jeff Homar at under center. First and 10. Hands it off to Lawrence Jenkins. He has been the man all year for the Seahawks. 887 yards on the ground. Second in the low country in rushing yards. 12 TDs thus far this season for Jenkins. Great tackle there by number 54, Michael Grant. The sophomore, only 5'9", 220 pounds. He goes both ways as an offensive tackle and also as a linebacker. He's the one that brought him down. So second and seven for the Seahawks. Home at under center. Jenkins behind him in the in the backfield. Homad's going to the air this time. Across the middle. In and out of the hands of number 11, Victor Frazier. That he has been his key receiver in this run that, that the Seahawks have put together. Three straight wins now for the Seahawks. Homad's had a bunch of TD passes. Most of them to Frazier. Frazier lines up as a tight end. They had two tight ends lined up that time. Victor Frazier is a traditional tight end. He's surrounded by Jacqueen Cohn as a running back, and you have also Clifford Morrow and Lawrence Jenkins. Third and seven now for the Seahawks. Man in motion, that's Clifford Morrow. He'll be on the slot. Homad's going to the air. Pressure from the Bobcats. Homad gets it off. He has his man, Morrow, but they call it incomplete. So, looks like the Seahawks will be punting here. Wow, what an effort by Anthony Gardner, number 55. He's only a junior, but he used 250 pounds to track down the six foot three Jeff Homard. What a great effort by number 55 as he came in and forced the quarterback to throw the ball not in rhythm. Looked blindside, but Homard was able to get it off, and now he will uh, go back to punt for the Seahawks. Two men back for the Bobcats. That's number 12, Stephen Bradley. And number eight, Desmond Jenkins. Bradley will take it on the bounce. No, he will let it bounce, and it goes Hilton Head's way inside the, inside the 10 to about the 7. Well, uh, we've got some players who have some opinions on the game, too, as well, Chuck. So uh, let, let's hear what Clifford Morrow and Jack Dwayne have to say about tonight's game. Uh, I'm pretty confident about tonight. I mean, we've been working very hard in practice as a team. Um, as a receiver, I guess we should... Um, Focus on running more precise routes, making it easier target for the quarterback, and hopefully that help us to tonight's victory. Um, on defense, we know they got a good run game, so we just gotta get to the ball as best we can, break down and make the tackles that are necessary. Missed tackles is obviously costly, so if we get there and break down and make the tackles, I think our defensive plan will work and we'll be able to come out with a victory. Well, you heard Jack Dwayne saying that they. Seahawks have to stop the run. They did that much on first down against Desmond Jenkins and the Bobcats offense. So it will be second and long, second and about second and ten for the Bobcats. And Tim, that's what I think is the most important aspect of this Bluffton offense is be able to run the ball effectively on first and second down in tonight's game. Keep them out of those third and long situations where they've not been effective all season long. That was a big play by number 42, Kenny uh, it's 26 to make the play, Kenny pitch, Robinson. Pitch out on second down to Frazier. Frazier fighting for yardage, but there is none to be had as number 32 is in on the tackle. Well, Tim, we know coming into this season, this was a young defensive team that the Hilton Head Seahawks were fielding on the field. And last week, they were able to shut out Battery Creek, but they made a great play on, on pursuit play by making the running back run lateral and be able to chase him down with the speed that they have on the outside. So two runs, three yards in those plays. Third and seven now for the Bobcats. Jenkins back to pass. Oh. And it doesn't look like Jimmy Tillman saw it coming. Excuse me, that's Desmond Jenkins. Yeah. So uh, did not see the pass coming from Combs. That was, uh, we've seen a couple wrinkles, new wrinkles in here. Combs coming in Absolutely. and moving Jenkins out to wide receiver. He wasn't expecting the ball. They, they had a little option pass there where either they were going to throw it to the tight end or it hit him. Bobcats. 
half to punt, long punt to the 45. Morrow takes it, breaks a couple tackles in the midfield. He's got one man to beat down the sideline, 30, 25, 20. Taken down at the 15 yard line by number 27, Jordan Rodriguez. So That's a the, great run back by Morrow. And the kicker had to make the, make the uh, tackle here, Tim. Again, it's sort of a muff punt, but the players sort of stopped almost a little bit, and then Morrow turns on the speed, goes right up the gut. Got to, had a middle return on, going vertical on this punt return, Tim, and a saving tackle here at the end, a touchdown saving tackle, but that gives a first down to the Seahawks inside the 20. So the Seahawks... Oh, they, they've got the first check to cash in. We'll see if they can do it. Right at the 15-yard line, Homad with two in the backfield. Hands it off to Jenkins. Jenkins has a little room. Gets to about the 11-yard line before being taken down. Wow, some good hard hitting inside. This time, number 50, that's Steven Schepanek. He goes both ways as a left guard and also as a defensive lineman. He just really rocks him with a, you know, an uplifting tackle right through the soft spot of the running back. So second and six now for the Seahawks. Michael Fodia, the fullback. Lawrence Jenkins behind him. Pitch out to Jenkins. Jenkins drops it. It's on the ground. He picks it up. Wow. Four yards in front of him. Bobcats say they have it at the one-yard line. We'll see what they call it. Oh, wow. They're very fortunate that they were able to recover this football. Great effort to get on top of it. Almost a first down. But... Uh, that's a, a little Fumbaruski play that not in the playbook, Tim. Not we were so told we'd see a lot of different plays tonight, but I don't think Coach Singleton was expecting to see that one. That was a wrinkle that that, that he did not want in his <laughs> nicely pressed shirt of of the playbook tonight. Uh, but I'll t he had three yards in front of him. It's hard to believe that ball was on the ground for three yards. It was a little drop kick. Wow. We haven't seen the drop kick since the 40s. Absolutely. <laughs> well, it looks like they got the first, so it's going to be first and goal for the Seahawks at the three-and-a-half-yard line. Homad gives the play to uh, Fodia and, Jack and Jenkins. Look for Fodia to lead the block. Jenkins up the middle. Goal line. Looks like he's taken down at about the one. You know, this is just a different offense that we've seen here from the Seahawks from earlier this year, Tim. They've gone through four different quarterbacks, and now they finally got Jeff Hom Homad in there, who's led them in the last three victories. This is a much different balance attack than they had earlier this year. Homad's a senior, but he didn't have the confidence on the field of his senior. He's got it now, and he's one yard away from putting the Seahawks on the board. Hand off again to Jenkins. Jenkins in the end zone. Touchdown. So the Seahawks of Hilton Head Island, the home team in the Bridge Bowl, they are on the board first, taking advantage wow, of what's the field gonna, position. Look at this, number 99, Marcus Johnson just blowing the linebacker four yards into the end zone. What an effort also by Jack Dwayne, the right guard. They were able to push the defensive line out of the way, and that's the reason why we have a touchdown on the board, Tim. So a short drive, about 20, uh, 20 yards for the Seahawks, but they cash it in. Extra point is up, and it's good. So 7.34 to go in the first quarter. 7-0 Seahawks. We'll take a break here on the Friday Night Football Zone. On WHHI-TV. This is Count Jacula. All you little goblins and ghouls need to visit the Salty Dog Haunted Village this Saturday for some trick-or-treating fun and backyard barbecue. There'll be mostly live entertainment and a kid's costume contest. Feeding time is around sundown and the contest starts at 7. I'll be waiting. <laughs> Back here on the Friday Night Football Zone, if you're just joining us. Two punts early. Hilton Nithead takes advantage of the field position. A one-yard run by Lawrence Jenkins puts the Seahawks up 7-0 with about four and a half minutes gone in the first quarter. Tim Wood, Chuck Zapek here with you on the action on the Friday Night Football Zone, the 2009 Bridge Bowl. We want to thank you for joining us here tonight on the Friday Night Football Zone. So the kick is off, a decent one, 
at the 10 taken by Jenkins. Jenkins wow. tries for the corner. He's got it out to the 25, 30, 35, 40. One man to beat and out of bounds at the 44. So Lawrence Jenkins says touche. <laughs> that is some kind of speed. Look at this. He catches the ball in the left hash mark, and the return is set up right, and it looks like he'll never get there. He's got six players to outrun. Look at him, Tim. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He outran them all and get to the, got to the corner and almost broke it. Watch the block here at the end of the play, and then a great job by number 10, Cliff Morrow, to get back into the action and force him out of bounds. Boy, what a play. What, if Jenkins cuts left right there at the <laughs> end of it, I, I'm not on the field, but what? Whoa. Wow, what uh, a play. What a run back nonetheless. So Jenkins back in at quarterback for the Bobcats. One man in the backfield. Fumbled snap and a flag on the play. Well, why we got a second here, I want to thank one of our sponsors, McDonald's Restaurants of Bluffton and Hilton Head. You saw them in the pregame show. We definitely stopped by, and we encourage you to stop by after the game and tackle one of McDonald's new thick and tasty Third Pound Angus Burgers and World Famous Fries. You'll be loving it. And we certainly were there at the uh, South End McDonald's, Chuck. Uh, we, where we did the pregame show on, on Wednesday, Tim. We can both testify on the, on the Third Pound Angus Burger. Oh, uh, that we can. And the World Famous Fries. No doubt. No doubt. So I like mine with ketchup. Indeed. <laughs> indeed. So... Uh, they get the Bobcats get backed up five yards, so first and fifteen at their own thirty-six. Jenkins under center, Frazier in motion, handoff delayed to Timmy Smith. Smith is out to about the thirty-seven. This is the play that they had to execute uh, then to get the uh, run the ball effectively tonight. The Bluffton Bobcats, and one of the keys to running the ball effectively is the blocking of number seventy-one, Philip Scott, the senior. He weighs. Five, 280 pounds. He's only five foot eleven. Well, watch Scott, number seventy-one. That's where the hand-to-hand -hand combat's going to go inside. And if he can move some of those defensive linemen out of the way, they'll be able to run the ball inside. He's a beast. He's a wrestler. He knows what he's doing with his hands. So Jenkins going to go to the air. Nope, he keeps it himself and uh, picks up about six yards on the keeper. So out to about the forty-four goes Jenkins. Well, we're going to be calling this man's number all night long, Tim, number 62. Jack Dwayne, you see here he scrapes off from his middle linebacker situation. But when you play this flex bone, which is a variation of the wishbone, when you play this, you're not going to – you have to ask your defensive linemen to fight double teams all night long. So you're not going to hear defensive linemen's names called up, called out. They're going to be cleaning – the linebackers are going to be cleaning up the mess they make in front of them. Jack Dwayne does a great job on that play. Third and seven for the Bobcats. One man in, in the backfield – Combs in motion, a little flea flicker action, overthrown to Jenkins. So, Jeremy West goes with the uh, little uh, a flea flicker flea early flicker on third down. The playbook, yeah, opens up a little bit. Well, he does too, but it looked like the defense they were ready to watch Jenkins as he comes out and runs out the backside. They run it to the wide side of the field. A nice defense, the defense by the Seahawks, they played their responsibilities well and were not forced out of position. Low snap, kick off. It's going to be on a bounce. And uh, the Bobcats are going to down it at the Seahawks 15. So that's where the Seahawks offense will take over. Trying once again. The defense has done the job thus far. Well, it was a special teams play that set it up. They were able to capitalize on the mistake of the poor coverage that time. And uh, what we saw was uh, Cliff Morrow run that ball down inside the 20-yard line, made a short field so that Seahawk offense was able to bang it in from there, Tim, despite the fact that they fumbled and drop-kicked the ball down to the two-yard line. So Seahawks begin at the 15, Fodia and Jenkins in the backfield. Fodia inside handoff. And Michael Fodia gets out to the 20. He has been the under-the-radar weapon for, for the Seahawks this year. He's gotten the yards inside, which has allowed Jenkins to get outside. Wow, he, he's, he's, no, he's been on my radar. I've seen yes. him, Tim. Um, basically, what, what he is, he becomes another blocker in the backfield. Every so often, they give him the ball up the gut, and he's gained some. So he has some pretty good yards per carry average. 232 yards on the season. Uh, two touchdowns for Fodia. But we saw in the last game against Lake Marion, 
he lit it up in the first half before getting injured. Pitch out on second down to Jenkins. Jenkins, first down and more. Still on his feet at the 40. He got out of it. Oh, he has got one man to beat down the sideline. 30, 25, he's got blockers. 15, 10, five, and touchdown. Wow. Lawrence Jenkins. There's a flag, Tim. Flag on the play. Well, yeah, let's not get too excited. Flag on the play. What an effort by Lawrence Jenkins. Coming into tonight's game, that's what I thought was the difference where the playmaking abilities and the speed of the of the perimeter players for the Seahawks. And you see Lawrence Jenkins making a fantastic move, spinning out of tackles, and then it's just a foot race to the goal line. Hey, you're looking at a guy here that runs for the track team. <laughs> and it's unfortunately coming back. So Jenkins calling for some oxygen. Wow. All for naught. Unfortunately, a penalty against the Seahawks. Well, I'll tell you, Jeremy West is breathing much easier right now with well, that penalty as the Bobcats stay only seven down. Whew. So instead of uh, an extra point attempt here, the, the Seahawks just keep walking backwards. And the ball will be at about the 20 yard line. Well, the senior, Lawrence Jenkins, he gained 500 yards last year, Tim, as a running back. And he cer certainly showed his shifty moves in the open field and that good balance that he's no noted for. Second and five for the Seahawks. Homad going to the air. Going deep for Frazier. He's got <laughs> Frazier down the sideline. He breaks the tackle 20, 15, 10, 5. Well, let's look for the flags. No flags. Touchdown. <laughs> Chuck, my voice is already gone. 80-yard <laughs> touchdown throw. Look Home at the Matt pump. Frazier. Great pump fake by Homad. You know, Homad's a big stud. He's six foot three. Look how far he throws that ball with some air underneath it, which gives Frazier an opportunity to adjust his route, make the catch. It's a little underthrown. But that's all he needs to come back and make a safe catch and then run the ball into the end zone. I'll tell you, uh, <laughs> these coaches were definitely cagey, but you knew that, that both of these guys were going for the jugular and Singleton's and his crew's done it so far. So extra point up and good. 439 to go here in the first. 14 nothing Seahawks. We'll take a break here on the Friday Night Football Zone. On WHHI-TV. Guys live their life a little differently. And we get it. So we built Sport Clips exclusively for you. We know happiness is a big screen TV, a legendary hot steam towel, a relaxing neck and shoulder massage, and hair that always looks great. Sport Clips. It's good to be a guy. Find the store near you and ask for our MVP treatment. For the past 19 years, our family has been serving your family with all your packing and shipping needs. We've shipped the care packages to camp, dorm trunks to college, the party favors for the wedding, and eventually even the crib and the rocking chair. We've made color copies for your class projects, we've typeset your resume, printed your baby announcements, party invitations, graduation announcements, and wedding invitations. We have been a proud supporter of our community. From our family to yours, thanks for the opportunity to serve you through the years. Back here on the Friday Night Football Zone. Well, if you're just joining us, Hilton Head. It's been all Hilton Head early. 4.39 to go in the first 14-0. They're kicking off after an 80-yard touchdown reception by Lawrence Jenkins. Bluffton Jenkins, Desmond, takes the kickoff out to the 10. Well, we want to uh, tell you about a new uh, show on uh, WHHI. Tune in daily for the Low Country Report. 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. That's where you'll find the Low Country Report with host Jane Jude. This new program in partnership with the Island Packet and Buford Gazette is a source for area information, giving our viewers an overview of what's happening locally. So that's the Low Country Report, 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. daily on WHHI-TV. Well, I don't know about you, Tim, but I can make that 8 p.m. show. It's the 8 a.m. I'm worried about. Yes. Well, you're out playing tennis at 8 a.m., right? <laughs> 
All right, so Bobcats, it's time to answer if you're the Bobcats here. They got a long field to work with. Pitch out on first down to Timmy Smith. Smith cuts back, gets to about the 16. Excuse me, that was Frazier on the carry. Yeah, nice, nice toss pitch here. Again, watch number 71. He's the one that leads the blocking out there. He's able to turn the defensive end outside, and that's the reason why the running back was able to gain those positive yards inside. So, second and three for the Bobcats. Good yardage on first down. Jenkins is your quarterback. We saw Combs early. One man in the backfield. Jenkins hands it off inside to Frazier. Frazier has the first down. And about one more out to the 22-yard line. And this time they, they run behind the right tackle. That's um, Anthony, Anthony Williams is in there. And uh, I'm sorry, Michael Grant leads the way at right tackle and opens up the hole. So first and 10 for the Bobcats. A good start to their drive. First and ten, one man in the backfield. Jenkins is going to keep it, and he is taken down. Might be a fumble, Tim. It is, but they give it. They award it to the Bobcats. Oh, Number see, twenty-eight in on the play. Kenny Robinson, along with Darius Taylor. Uh, that really hurts on first down. As I mentioned earlier, in order to stay in tonight's game, the Bluffton Bobcats need to run the ball effectively on first and second down. Otherwise, they get into long, third and long situations. They've just not been that effective this year. Again, one man in the backfield, second and 11 for the Bobcats. Hands it off. Frazier going nowhere, taken down by a flock of Seahawks. <laughs> Good job up here. Number two comes up from his right corner position that's Austin Rakes ends up making a, a, a nice tackle Kenny Robinson also in on the play so the Bobcats not where they want to be right now third and nine Kenny Robinson that's his 83rd tackle of the year he's second on the team to Jack Dwayne Jack Dwayne's got 113 tackles so third and long Jenkins is going to keep it, and he's going nowhere. He's out to the 25, and again, Chuck, three possessions, three punts for the Bobcats. Well, at least they picked up a first down that time, Tim, but Darius Taylor, we said earlier in tonight's program that, Dar that the linebackers would make a lot of plays, and that's what they are. They force the quarterback to run lateral rather than vertical, and that's what you want to do playing these flexbone, wishbone type of offenses. Get the ball moving lateral. And they did that and were able to corral them. Another big playoff implication game. Shea Watkins, a 20-yard field, field goal. Whoop. Oh, there's another flag. Nearly blocked. Oh, no, a it's, flag it's... on the field. Well, he hasn't picked it up yet. Looks like it's going to be a penalty against Bluffton. But the, the rough and the kicker uh, penalty was waved off because it was partially blocked. Indeed, so they will uh, have to kick it again. Well, I started to say there, Shea Watkins, a 20-yard field goal, gives Hilton Head Christian Academy a 3-0 lead at Northwood Academy. I That's picked them the to win. Title. You know, I looked at the Island Packet today and saw all, everybody ha had picked it the other way around. I think Hilton Head Christian has that good of a defense, Tim. Agreed. We saw it. Well, that will not be re-kicked. Uh, that was just marked off. And the Seahawks will have it at the Bobcats 45, again, starting inside Bobcats territory. Homad, this time in the shotgun with two backs flanking him. Pitch out to Jenkins. Jenkins breaks the tackle to the 40. Wow. Following his blockers, 35, downed at the 33-yard line. So Lawrence Jenkins, big what run. You see here in the this is a, a down-the-line option run by the quarterback, a missed tackle in the backfield, and that allowed Jenkins to get into the open field. And this is where I thought the difference was, was that the perimeter players for the Seahawks just had much more speed, and they're showing it early in tonight's game, Tim. There's just too much speed to catch up to. 
first and ten for the Seahawks at the Bluffton 33. Homad under center, two in the backfield. Inside handoff to Fodia. Fodia bangs forward for about three yards. Oh, why wow, we got a second. Want to thank another one of our fine sponsors, Salty Dog Cafe. Get your Salty Dog T-shirt at the Salty Dog T-shirt factory located at South Beach Marina or on Arrow Road. Also available anytime at www.saltydog.com. Salty Dog Cafe T-shirts will suit you to a T. It's cold enough for me to wear my Salty Dog T-shirt, Tim. I think Tim. so. So this looks like it might be the last play of the quarter. All Hilton Head, first quarter. Homad is going to try to end it right. Goes to the end zone for Frazier. Frazier Got catches it. it. Touchdown. The signal touchdown, Seahawks. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. 33-yard strike, Homad to Frazier. Well, look at this throw by Homad. Again. Face him out. Yeah. Another pump and go. He throws the ball into the corner. Typically, what he try to do is get it to the outside shoulder. Frazier turns inside, <laughs> but the ball was thrown perfectly to the outside shoulder. He's able to turn around and make a circus catch. Wow. All Seahawks, 20 to nothing. See if they can tack on the extra point. And they get it. So 10.2 seconds to go here in the first quarter. 21 nothing. Seahawks will take a break here on the Friday Night Football Zone. On WHHI TV. Hilton Head Glidden Paint Store on New Orleans Road has been serving the island's professional and do-it-yourself painters for 25 years. Owned by Islanders David and Jeannie Harder, along with their Bluffton and Beaufort Glidden stores, they are big enough to give you competitive prices and experienced enough to save you time and money by helping you do your paint job right the first time. Whether you are a high volume contractor or matching the color in a pillow, personal attention and service is the cornerstone of their success. Back here on the Friday Night Football Zone, we're not in the fourth quarter here, folks. Just ending the first quarter, 21-0. Hilton Head Island, Seahawks. Trying to end the regular season right and secure the number one, the number two seed and a home playoff game, and they're well on their way. Kickoff right at the goal line, taken out by Jenkins. Jenkins downed at about the 17 yard line. So again, Bluffton with a big field to work with. Well, they got the quarterback, Desmond Jenkins, who's the best ass all around athlete. For the Bobcats returning kickoffs, now he's got to go in and try to play a quarterback position. I think he just might be a little bit tired. I would hope he'd give the ball to somebody else to run on this play, Tim. That's three kickoffs he's returned already. You know, Jenkins only has 300, uh, excuse me, 211 yards pass in the whole season. This gets any more out of hand. They're going to have to start going to the air here. Uh, it's too early to pass. They're just going to run the ball. That's got to be their come from behind offense. Timeout, Tim Singleton not happy with Nick Batista. Just about the only thing he's had to complain about here. We'll take a commercial as well here. 2.4 seconds to go in the first quarter. Back with you on the Friday Night Football Zone. On WHHI TV. Proudly serving Hilton Head for over seven years, whether you are looking to celebrate a special occasion, take the family out to dinner, or catch your favorite sporting team on one of our 12 televisions, Mellow Mushroom is the place to be. We offer gourmet pizzas, gigantic calzones, fresh hoagies, and crisp cold salads seven days a week. Check out our full service bar featuring over 100 different beers, so next time the mood strikes, tell your friends and family. 2.4 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Tim Wood, Chuck Zapek with you from the Hawks' Nest. And so far, the Hawks have done plenty of clawing at the Bobcats. 21 nothing. Final play of the first quarter. Ryan Combs in. Oh. Nearly intercepted to end the first quarter by number 31, Ray Harrington. But uh, no interception. We'll take a break. End of the first quarter, 21 nothing. Hilton head ahead. Bridge Bowl 4 here on the Friday Night Football Zone. On WHHI-TV. 
Torque Athletic Club has changed the local fitness landscape forever. And along with Tan Go Tanning, we are the ultimate place to be. With 59 group fitness classes a week and over half a million dollars of brand new equipment, Torque has a juice bar, free childcare, and free membership specials. And sign up for Tan Go Tanning to get state of the art equipment with a wide variety of lotions and membership programs for everyone. Torque Athletic Club and Tan Go Tanning, right near Sea Turtle Cinemas in Bluffton. I guess there's stars and then there's superstars. Um, I'm bringing value to the team. I think that's what's most, hey, the most, yeah. You bring my um, dunks? Yeah. Got you right here, baby. Uh, are you bringing value? That's what I'm bringing to the team. Now at McDonald's, get a double cheeseburger extra value meal for only $2.99. That's a 100% all beef double cheeseburger, a medium fries, and a medium Coke. We get really hungry around here. And when that happens, I go get the food. Back here on the Friday Night Football Zone, beginning of the second quarter. Hilton head ahead, 21-0. Bobcats second down. They've gone to Ryan Combs, the quarterback. Combs going to the air. He's got his man, number one. That's B.J. Kitty. Complete first down out to about the 39. Well, it looks like we're going to see Ryan Combs, the quarterback. Here they run a flea flicker. Perfectly executed. Can't see if he runs away from the pressure a little bit, by some time, and is able to find B.J. Kitty down the field. Good job by the offensive line. Well-executed play by the Bluffton Bobcats. And a first down. So, uh, while wow, we got a second. I want to thank one of our sponsors, H&H &H Auto. Customer-friendly, guaranteed quality. The number one place for auto sales and service on Hilton Head. That's H&H &H Auto. So, first and ten for the Bobcats. Combs under center. He's going to the air again. Complete across the middle. One man to beat for number four. That is Alfonso Powell, and he is down to the 30-yard line. So, a little infusion of energy by Combs here. Look at the throw by Combs. I mean, he gets hit just as he releases the ball and just throws just a, a, a laser strike to the curling number four, Alfonso Powell, who makes a great catch right in the middle and almost breaks it for a touchdown. That's what they need to get back in this game are some plus 20 yard pass plays and a couple 15 plus yard running plays. So the Bobcats on the move. 30 yard line of Hilton Head, Combs keeper. He is taken down by number 28, Kenny Robinson. Yeah, we watched Kenny Robinson comes on a blitz here, number 28, he comes free. Nobody picks him up, but this, you know, Robinson has been doing this for two years now, we've been watching him, Tim. What a great effort by the senior, 5'10", 180 pound linebacker, number 28, Kenny Robinson. Six and a half sacks now on the season for Robinson. So that takes a little air out of the Bobcats drive. They're backed up to the 34, second and 15. Well, they got Combs in quarterback now to throw the ball. It's not quite as critical to have a, a successful first down. Combs going deep, overthrows his man. That was number 20, Timmy Smith. So it will be third and long now for the Bobcats. You know, the only thing about having Combs in the lineup is, is that the pass protection of the Bluffton Bobcats was not that good in the beginning of the year. And you know what, Tim? It hasn't really improved. They've, they turned into a running team, and now they're just getting outmanned when they go back to pass. And that's one of the reasons Combs was not able to, to play effectively earlier in the year. I mean, the only time they've had time here is, is doing the flea flicker. Yeah. That's not a good sign early in the second no. quarter. You're either going to have to roll him out. If you just keep him in the pocket, he's going to get smacked. Third and 15 and a penalty. Well, if you're scoring at home, folks, this would be NG on your scorecard for not good. <laughs> Everything going wrong so far for the Bobcats. Third and 20 now. They are backed up to the 39-yard line. Well, the Bobcats haven't played very well all year on the road, Tim. Last week at North Charleston, um, uh, they got licked pretty good, 40-22. to 22. Um, you would think that this wasn't that. Oh, third and long goes deep for Stephen Bradley. And as you see here on the replay. Pretty nice pass and great defensive play to break, up, break it up at the end there. Broken up by number two, 
Austin Rakes. Austin Rakes. We haven't seen much of him this year. No. But the senior makes a great, make great play. Well, 9.45 to go here in the half. Another punt coming for Bluffton. Ah, just barely got it off oh, there's again. There's a flag. There's a flag. And we're going to have uh, a penalty on the play, roughing the kicker by Frazier and number 32, Kobe, Cody Forbes. So Bluffton will get to extend this drive. That's a mental error. That's a breakdown there. Foolish penalty. They're giving you the football. You just stopped them. The last thing, I know you got the punt block on, but you got to lay out where the kicker is going to be, not where he is. Why they're marking off the yardage. Want to uh, mention another one of our sponsors, Palmetto Exterminators. Al Palmetto Mosquito Control, family owned and operated, protecting people's health, their property, and the environment for over 40 years. That's Palmetto Exterminators and Palmetto Mosquito Control, another one of our fine sponsors, making the Friday Night Football Zone available to you, the viewer. And we want to thank you for v tuning in tonight and all throughout the season. Been a great season here on the Friday Night Football Zone. Tim Wood, Chuck Zapek up here in the booth at the Hawks Nest. First and 10, new life for the Bobcats at the Seahawks 25. Combs goes to the air, throws it through two men. Well, looked like it was intended for Kitty. Timmy Smith was right there in the neighborhood with him. Well, they were running a caboose bat pattern there. You had one right behind the other. Wow. I don't think that's the way it was designed. Two players in the same area. But as we just mentioned a little earlier ago, they have not been a passing team ever since they've gone to the flex bone offense with quarterback Desmond Jenkins running it. But I guess they've never been down 21 points this early in the game before either. So Coach West selecting to go with Ryan Combs at quarterback. Combs under center, hands it off inside. Down to about the 21 yard line goes Frazier. You know, Tim, this is, a, this is a critical point part of the game for the Bobcats. Yeah, they're down 21 nothing, but you got the ball on the team's going in 21 yard line. You, you pick up a score here, you can very quickly get back in the game. Four down territory? Oh, yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah. Rodriguez no, no question has, a, here. has a foot. Well, no, no, they're, they're not going to take three points. You're not points. taking the three points here. No. All right, so third and seven. I go that I go again to another, you know, a deep pass. You've got Alfonso Powell on the left, Kitty on the right. He goes for Powell to the end zone. It's up. Oh, he's got Drago interference and, play, and he's got a he touchdown. Caught it anyway. It's a touchdown. That's what I was looking for. Waiting for the call. I'm not sure if they're going to call it a touchdown or not. They're saying. Or is it oh, offensive it, interference? Ah. Let's look on the replay here. We'll get a good look, Tim. That's the play I was looking for to the wide side of the field. He threw a great ball last time. This time he puts another ball up for grabs. I'm not sure what they're calling, Tim. They're calling, they're calling a pass interference on the Seahawks. So it was an incompletion yeah. with path in, pass interference. So, but it, Maybe we can get maybe, the replay maybe, on maybe this again. Maybe he dropped it. I, I mean, that, that's I, the only he thing Obviously, he dropped of, it where yeah. they would not have it. On the replay, we'll see just where the interference is. Uh, that's a tough call there. Both players have the right to the football. I think Coach Singleton, he might be, uh, he may have some thoughts of his own about that one. So the Bobcats at the 10 yard line, oh, flags oh, this on hurts. the play. This hurts. You got to eliminate those mental errors. Wow, I know you got a different quarterback in there. You got a different cadence. You're you're trying to hurry up your offense here because you're already down three scores. But the you know the foolish penalties that you have now it's first and fifteen just can kill you, Tim. If you're Combs, you get you get removed from your starting position. You got new life now, right? I mean, you 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 you've got uh, all the confidence in the world. You got nothing to lose here. Hey, right? that offensive line's got to protect them for that new life, though. It'll be a short life. First and fifteen, pitch out to Frazier, and you're talking about he broke the, a few well, he broke one down wow. to the ten yard line goes down Woo! to Frazier. He was taken down at the twenty-two. And Talk he about got twelve yards. Look at this through a flock of Seahawks. One, two tacklers. What's this? Three, four, five. Oh my goodness! It finally takes 
He broke another two tackles on his way down. What an effort by Fraser. Down Great. to the eight yard line. Wow. There's no, uh, it's going to be second and goal here for the Bobcats. No first down here. No quitting Fraser tonight. Combs going to the end zone. He's got a man oh, through no, the right hands there. of Kitty. <laughs> oh, that hurts. Ah, uh, drop balls. They're just as big as turnovers. And this time you've got a drop ball on a touchdown, a sure touchdown. That's a shame. Hey, by the way, we want to give a shout out. That was excellent replay work by our MVP in the booth, Tess Rose. <laughs> On that interference call. She's so good. We don't even need a telestrator. She just picks it out for us. Third and goal here for the Bobcats. Combs backs up. He goes to the end zone. Oh, Long shoulder wow. for Jenkins. Incomplete. Jenkins was leaning into the end zone. Combs threw to the, to the pylon. No this good. A, this is a pretty exciting game. Yeah. Tim, I know it's 21 nothing, but you got... The Bobcats threatening to get back in this. They only need a one score here to get into it. Fourth and about eight yards for the touchdown. Fourth and goal, Jeremy West. He's a gambler too, folks. He's going for it on fourth down and goal at the eight-yard line. Jenkins to the end zone again. Touchdown. Caught. That wow. is Alfonso Powell. With the eight-yard touchdown. What well, the a Bobcats throw. gamble, and they get it, Chuck. Wow. They do, too. Great job, as we were just mentioning. It only took one touchdown to get back into this game. And they're back in it, Tim. This is going to be a good game. You know, coming into the game, I said, somebody asked me today, what do you think is going to happen? I thought it was going to be a high-scoring game because both offenses have improved so dramatically throughout the season. How big was that play, though? You stop it, you take all the life out of Bluffton. Yep. And now they have new life. Rodriguez on the extra point attempt. Kick is up, and it is good. So 8 2 to go here in the first half. Bobcats on the board, 21-7. Seahawks lead on the Friday Night Football Zone. On WHHI-TV. <laughs> Back here on the Friday Night Football Zone. 21-7 the score now as the Bobcats are on the board here on Bridge Bowl 4 on WHHI-TV. Tim Wood, Chuck Zapek here on the Friday Night Football Zone. Well, I'll tell you, Ryan Combs comes in, number 16, back to get his uh, position at quarterback that he lost earlier this year on that drive. He was as smooth as mayonnaise. Taking that down and finishing it off with a fourth down touchdown. Rodriguez with the liner kick taken at the 15. Jaquan Cohen out to the 45. And he is near midfield, so they've got so many weapons. We hadn't even called Cohen's name so far, and he <laughs> makes us call it with this kickoff return. Once again, it's a Hilton Head perimeter players that have all the speed. We, we, we know that they've performed in the past and are doing it again tonight, particularly on, they're going vertical on these special team plays, getting up the gut of the special team's coverage of the Bluffton Bobcats. All right, so the Seahawks, again, with excellent field position at their own 47. Homad, why oh. not? He goes deep again for Morrow. Morrow goes up big and almost intercepted. By number 24, that is Anthony Smith. Oh, watch Homer get laid out. They come up with a middle blitz. Ooh. Wow. What a great hit there at the end. Homer stayed in there. He had to, just to get rid of the ball, he had to loft it up there a little bit. That's Bluffton's only freshman starter, Anthony Smith the second. 
getting big air, almost coming down with the interception. So second and ten for the Seahawks. Homad under center. That was center. Jenkins back there. Man in motion is Cohen. Wow. Pressure galore by the Bobcats. That's number 52. Forrest Bryan, the senior D lineman, making his presence known. Uh, that, that's Randy Grayson, 52. Oh, excuse me, for, yes. For, for Bluffton. That comes breaking through there. He's actually supposed to be the option. They were optioning off the, the end at the line of scrimmage, but they didn't realize that he, that he was coming on an ego, they call it. And go straight up the field. He wasn't going to settle down and try to play the option. We, we've called Grayson's name plenty this season, and that, now we know why. So third and 20. Homad's got three receivers out. Draw play to Jenkins. Jenkins fights to get back to the line of scrimmage. So after the big touchdown drive, the Bobcats come up with a defensive stop. Oh, you got to give a lot of credit to this Bluffton defense. I mean, they were just out of it a few minutes ago. Now they're hustling and pursuing, and they're making sure tackles for losses behind the line of scrimmage. What a great, aggressive, tough series of downs they just played, Tim. Desmond Jenkins and Stephen Bradley back to handle the kick from Homad. Low snap. Penalty before the play. Well, while we got a second, want to thank McDonald's restaurants of Bluffton and Hilton Head. Stop by after the game and tackle one of McDonald's new thick and tasty third pound Angus burgers and world famous fries. You'll be loving it. You know, Tim, I'm not down on the field as a coach. I'm up here in the broadcasting booth. But if I was down as a coach in the special teams, we got the wind blown pretty stiffly from our right to left. I'd put a third receiver back there to catch this punt because chances are with that wind, it's going to take a little tricky hop and it's going to go against you. The, the, simply the ball's going to go in the direction of the blow. And uh, I, you, know, you could lose field position if it's not fielded cleanly. Ball at the 35, 34 now. High snap this time. Homad fields it. Gets the kickoff. Good protection. Catch it. Fair there catch by Bradley. Taken at the Bobcats 36. Wow. 6-13 to go here in the half. 21-7 Seahawks. Bridge Bowl 4 here on the Friday Night Football Zone. On WHHI-TV. Been in a wreck? Bring your car to h, &H Auto Body at 17 Cardinal Road. At h, h Auto Body, you'll get a free estimate in their state-of-the-art facility. No matter the damage, the great team at h, h Auto Body will have your car looking great and back on the road in no time. Back here on the Friday Night Football Zone, Tim Woodchuck, Zapek. First down for the Bobcats. They went deep to Powell again. Powell through the hands. A real cat and mouse game going on out there by Alfonso Powell, the junior, 6'1", 170 pounds. They're sending him against Austin Rakes, who's got him in man-to-man -man coverage. But they have him split out so far. Uh, they have Powell split out so far that even if he had zone coverage, it still ends up being man-to-man. -man. It's just mano a mano on the outside, and it looks like... Jeremy West wants to take that bet. First and 10 Bobcats. Timmy Smith breaks one tackle, but he's not going to break anymore. He's taken down in the backfield. Boy, Timmy Smith fighting for every yard there. Wow. Third down now. Third and long for the Bobcats. Well, you know, you can see up here that one of the it was Jack Dwayne came on a blitz up the middle, and that's, that's who disrupted the play and blew it up back in the backfield. And I don't know, Tim. I might go after Powell again and give him an opportunity to make a play. Third and 15 for the Bobcats. Combs is going to go to the air. Does he have time? He goes deep, going for Kitty. Kitty! Got it! Oh, no! Oh, no! Kitty had it and dropped it. Kitty at the 33-yard line. Into double coverage, had his hands on it, 
but incomplete. Well, once again, we have two receivers running the same route, it looks like. But nice job this time. Ryan Combs avoids the rush, steps up into the pocket, and throws the ball to the outside shoulder. Kitty almost comes down with the ball. You know what? That's, that's not that bad of a play. Now you got to punt into, the, uh, into a windmill, and uh, you're relying on your special teams here to gain some field position. Punt up. A good one. It's going to bounce. It's going to back him up. Moro is going to take it at the 20. Going to run with it. Nowhere to go, and Moro is taken down at the 20-yard line. So, Bobcats at least able to flip the field. Good coverage on that on that long throw. Want to mention uh, Lamont Williams on the coverage for the Seahawks. Tim, this is exactly what I just meant on the other kick. I mean, they lost 15 yards of field position there by not fielding a ball and let it bounce. Whereas before, and when Bluffton was able to field the ball, they had a first and goal, first and ten from the 36-yard line. Seahawks from the net high, they don't field the ball successfully, and now they got to start from their own 20-yard 20 20 yard line. That's 80 yards before you get the pay dirt. What a difference! Homad under center, Fodia and Jenkins in the backfield. First and ten for the Seahawks. Hand off to Jenkins. Jenkins down at the 20. Wow. S some tough hitting inside. Michael Grant, Steven Sapanik all in on the play. Yeah, and Anthony Gardner around the ball, number 55. Well, stay tuned with us at the halftime. We'll have uh, a full house up here in the booth. We'll have uh, the f our, our friends from McDonald's up here with uh, station owner John Byrne. And we'll recap the first half action. Second down for the Seahawks. Homad going to try to go to the air. He's got Frazier. Frazier in the backfield. Breaks one tackle out to the 20. Taken down. Nice tackle by number 34. That... Well, I don't have a 34. Brett Crosby. You got one. Okay. Yeah, I got one. 34. I, I got a junior, 5'9", 145 pounds, Brett Crosby, making an open field tackle, and it looks like there's a block from behind that's going to move the ball back another 10 yards. You know, this just goes back into not fielding a punt properly, Tim. Now you're going to march that ball all the way back inside the 15-yard line, and those, those splits and those openings become tighter and tighter in a coming-out offense. It's just tough to move out of there. Crowd here on uh, senior night here at the Hawks Nest. A little quieter than they were in the first, first quarter as uh, Bobcats have taken back a little bit of the momentum with 4.38 to go here in the half. 11-yard line. Hey, Tim, there's four minutes and 38 seconds left. They hold them here for the next two plays. Field position. Yeah, they could get back in this game in a hurry. Homad in the shotgun. Two backs flanking him. Homad will roll out. He's got Moro deep. He goes for him. Moro goes up for it. Incomplete at the 42-yard line. Moro was waving his hand the whole time saying, get me the ball. What a throw by Homad. He th released that ball around his own goal line. That's about a 60-yard pass. Uh, granted, there's a wind behind his back coming from right to left. Well, what a throw by Homer. We've seen some outstanding throws tonight. And, and these coaches are going for broke. Oh, which they is, are. Which is a lot of fun as the viewer and as us calling the game, oh, I'll tell you. This is an exciting game. Absolutely. So third and 21 for the Seahawks. Bobcats back in a little prevent. Home at under center. Pitches it out to Jenkins. Jenkins. Trying to cut to the outside, and he is upended wow. at the 14-yard line by Elf, uh, by number three, Tony Burns. The shortest man on the Bluffton roster at five foot four. The junior comes up from his defensive safety position Ooh. and goes right into the soft spot of the running back, which was his upper thigh, and just leveled him with a Lancing blow. Burns has been hurt. He's had ankle issues. His dad, Tony Sr., is actually uh, runs the Major League Barbershop in Bluffton. I just wow. got my hair cut there a couple days ago, and uh, he was hoping his son could get back in the game, and he makes a big, big tackle there. So I thought that looked better in a bowl cut. There that, you go. That's, that's yes. pretty good, Tim. A little, uh, a little thinner. Flag on the field. Hey, Bluffton could be back in this game. 
they, they're gonna catch, have they're gonna have a lot of clock to work with. They're gonna you know catch the ball in the punt. Don't let it bounce. You don't want it to hit one of your own blockers, your own own men on a short punt. Catch the ball so it doesn't roll. You got to win that win behind the punter's back, and you'll end up with good field position. They should get the ball in Seahawk territory if they field the punt properly. Homad in his end zone to punt. Gets it off. A good one. Deep. Oh. Uh, they let it bounce, and oh, this is going to flip the field. <sighs> Bounces down to the 25-yard line. Oh. So a 75-yard punt by Homad. Yeah, just what I said. You got to field the punt. Just catch the ball. It was so nonchalant there. Yards. They were so nonchalant. Well, it was a missed call. The, the, the two receivers looked at each other, and nobody called it. It was my, my ball. And, uh, you Flag know, it's, on like playing, the play? it's like playing doubles, right? So 3.23 to go. It's Bobcats. Well, they had a flag. Personal, personal foul, foul against Both the Seahawks. Teams. Personal foul against the Bobcats offsetting. So Bobcats will begin at their 25 well, that's a mental mistake, Tim. Just another mental mistake by the Bluffton Bobcats. Had they caught that ball, he probably could have gotten some kind of return, and they'd be on the plus side of the field rather than on the negative side of the field. 75 yards away from Pater. Quick update for you. Luke Sergo runs it in for Hilton Head Christian Academy, and the Eagles lead Northwood 10-3 with 24 seconds to go in the half. Did I say earlier that I picked Christian you Academy? You sure did. Thank you. So the Bobcats had a chance, couldn't uh, couldn't get the field position, and now first and ten, Frazier fighting for yards as he has all half. Wow! And wow, he broke at least six tackles on that run, gets himself out to the forty-yard line. Zach Frazier is showing us why he's been a thousand-yard rusher in the past. Number twenty-three uses all two hundred five pounds of his brute strength to move that ball. All the way to the 40 yard line. Now they got somewhere some something op, somewhere to operate from, and it opens up the field for you. 15 yard run for Frazier. Bobcats, good start to the drive, ticking down at three minutes to go in the half. Inside handoff. Frazier again, stumbling, <laughs> bumbling out to the 48. <laughs> How about Frazier, huh? Wow. Talk about toughness. Boom! Look at this. Boom! Look at the toughness here. Boom! I mean, you're right. The pin Look at him just use it and then just kind of just drill his legs up there. Pinball wizard. Wow. Just bouncing off. And, you know, the offensive line responds, too. They're coming off the ball when they run the ball to him up the middle. Second and one now for the Bobcats. Another handoff up the middle. Frazier fights for the first down. Looks like he got it. Well, while we got a second... Want to thank McDonald's restaurants of Bluffton and Hilton Head. Stop by after the game and tackle one of McDonald's new thick and tasty third pound Angus burgers and world famous fries. You'll be loving it. Coach and West I, Coach West is doing exactly what I what I thought Tim that he should do. When he run the ball, get behind 260 pound Steven Shapanik, the left guard, and 280 pound Philip Scott, the, the left tackle. First and ten quick screen pass out to the sideline to Powell. Powell fights for yardage. See where they mark it down. He's going to be close to the first down. Uh, they look like they will mark it right near the sticks at the 39-yard line of Hilton Head. Well, uh, we mentioned McDonald's. We're going to have some folks from uh, John Palmacio's McDonald's franchises here in the Low Country. They'll be up here at the half. Looking forward to that. They were very kind to us Wednesday over at the South End McDonald's. And uh, we certainly are loving McDonald's. They've been a wonderful sponsor for us here on the Friday Night Football Zone. First and 10 for the Bobcats. Combs going deep. Oh, is it? It is intercepted by Clifford Morrow at the 12-yard line. Well, if you're the Bobcats, you're gambling, and this is what happens. Can't always come down with the blackjack. Well, they made a little substitution in there, Tim. They got the speedier and taller Morrow into the lineup instead of Austin Rakes, and they put him man-to-man -man 
on number four, Alfalzo Pyle, and that's the reason he was able to make that leaping interception. A huge play for Clifford Morrow. He does it on offense. He does it on defense. We've seen it before in our games earlier this season. So Homad takes over at his own 12-yard line. Fodia and Jenkins in the backfield. Quick pass to Morrow. Morrow follows his blockers out to the 18-yard line. He uh, had Hunter Anderson out in front of him. And then you got the strong linebacker, Desmond Jenkins. I think he plays quarterback, too. Look at, him, look at the hit he makes here. Morrow's able to avoid one tackler, but look at Jenkins just deliver a blow, a rising blow right into the midsection. What a hit. Way to stick him. Second and five for the Seahawks. Time ticking down. 120 to go in the first half. Handoff. That's a handoff to number 26, Michael Fodia. Well, he's a fullback, but he sure moves well. Well, it's a straight dive, and here they get a double team on the nose guard, and then the linebacker is occupied briefly as Fodia comes by. Even though the linebacker was able to knock down the left offensive guard for the Seahawks, number 55, Anthony Gardner, was occupied just enough to allow Fodia to get past him for the big gainer. 109 to go here in the half. We'll take a commercial on the Friday Night Football Zone. On WHHI-TV. Welcome to the Blind Pig Saloon. Come in and enjoy an upscale American bar featuring the best in local and regional live music, dancing, two pool bars, billiards lounge, and the best bar food in Bluffton. So whether you're coming in to hang out and have a beer, or you're ready for a night out on the town, come in and see what all the buzz is about at the Blind Pig Saloon. Back here on the Friday Night Football Zone, Tim Wood, Chuck Zapek, 109 to go here in the half. 21-7 Seahawks. They're out to their 33-yard line. First and 10. Home at under center. He's going to the air. A little screen, A lot of screen. pressure. Screen pass to Fodia. Fodia, 45-50. 45-40. He is off. 20-15-10. Five. Touchdown, Michael Fodia. Looking for flags, there are none. The junior fullback, a huge play with under a minute to go here in the half. Beautifully set up that time, great timing. This is, you can tell this play's been practiced a lot. The offensive line, four of them release downfield. That's why they were able to pick up the linebackers. And then Fodia uses his speed. He's surprisingly fast, too. You know, they put him at fullback because he loves to hit people. Yes. But that's some speed for a fullback. Wow. Wow. You're so, my how <laughs> the momentum has turned here <laughs> in the final two minutes. Kick up. Kick good. 28-7. Seahawks back in control here on the Friday Night Football Zone. On WHHI TV. Hi, I'm Larry O'Sullivan. And I'm Brad O'Sullivan. And we're O'Sullivan Equipment and Supply. We are your number one source for any and all of your janitorial equipment and supply needs. We specialize in equipment and supplying hospital and healthcare, warehouse, industrial, and commercial cleaning businesses. We remedy all continuous cleaning service needs, including all floor types, windows, water damage, odor, and mildew. For the absolute best prices on equipment and supplies anywhere, please contact Larry or Brad O'Sullivan. We, we will, will save, save you money, money and time. Back here on the Friday Night Football Zone, Tim Wood, Chuck Zapek on the call. Why we got a second, want to let you know about a new show on WHHI. It's the Low Country Report. Tune in daily at 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. for the Low Country Report with host Jane Jude. This new program, in partnership with the Island Packet and Buford Gazette, is a source for area information, giving our viewers an overview of what's happening locally. 8 a.m., 8 p.m. daily. That's the Low Country Report here on WHHI-TV. 
I might well, have to tune into that, Tim. Here, Chuck. Yeah. Wow. The report is bleak for the Bobcats. Just went bleak. As they look to have great field position. They look to have everything working for them. Interception by Moro. And then a huge strike from home man. And Jeff Fodia does the rest on a screen pass. Well executed his play. Wow. I mean, the timing was just there. And this is just a different offense. You know, th this team, the Seahawks, started off the season losing three games without much offense. And they were switching quarterbacks um, you know, daily or, or weekly. Now they finally settled down on home ad, or home ad, and this is quite, a, quite an offense. Tell you what, 67-yard strike, third TD pass of the game for home ad. Bobcats try to get something going to end the half. Complete out to the 40. He hits uh, Alfonso Powell. Flag on the play. Well, Chuck, as if it, the momentum wasn't bad enough turn for the Bobcats, we have news from Lake Marion. Battery Creek is beating up on Lake Marion 33-6. That was the worst case scenario for the Bobcats in the playoff scenario. Bobcats lose, Battery Creek wins. It's a three-way tie for the playoff and it will go to tiebreakers and quite possibly the Bobcats are gonna be in another coin toss situation where they lost out on last year. But there's still plenty of time here to play at the Hawks Nest. 40 seconds to go, a lot of pressure and taken down. Jenkins back in at quarterback. He is taken down at the 12 yard line. A lot of pressure brought in from the interior of that side. A couple of missed assignments, but you know, Tim, this is this is the same offensive line that had trouble protecting Ryan Coombs earlier in the year, and that's the reason why he lost his starting position. That might be the last play of the half. 28-7. Bobcats ahead on their own field. Dominating Bridge Bowl four. Well, we've got the McDonald's people in the, in the booth. We'll come back, meet all the fine folks of McDonald's with the Low Country. 28-7, Seahawks on top here on the Friday Night Football Zone. On WHHI TV. Whether you want a healthier home, have high energy bill concerns, need to schedule a repair, or are ready for system maintenance, go to Mark's Heating and Cooling, where their success is due to a great staff, a few sound business principles, lots of technical training, and an honest desire to please. Give them a call at 681-2350 or go to their website, MarksHeatingAndAir.com. And while you're there, cast your vote for the local charity that you would like to see win this month's $500 donation. When you call, they'll be there. Mark's Heating and Cooling. It can be this big, that big, whatever, bring it on. Guys live their life a little differently. And we get it. So we built Sport Clips exclusively for you. We know happiness is a big screen TV, a legendary hot steam towel, a relaxing neck and shoulder massage, and hair that always looks great. Sport Clips. It's good to be a guy. Find the store near you and ask for our MVP treatment. For the past 19 years, our family has been serving your family with all your packing and shipping needs. We've shipped the care packages to camp, dorm trunks to college, the party favors for the wedding, and eventually even the crib and the rocking chair. We've made color copies for your class projects, we've typeset your resume, printed your baby announcements, party invitations, graduation announcements, and wedding invitations. We have been a proud supporter of our community. From our family to yours, thanks for the opportunity to serve you through the years. Hey everybody, welcome to halftime of Bridge Bowl 4 between Hilton Head and Bluffton. We've got some special guests with us tonight. It's 28-7, Hilton Head at the half. And believe it or not, great game. There's been a lot of good plays, a lot of big plays tonight. But we wanted to take a few minutes and introduce our presenting sponsor for this 2009 high school football season. It's our local area McDonald's stores. And uh, we just want to say, and we've said it before at halftime, a few of the other games, that uh, without McDonald's as a presenting sponsor, 
a lot of what you see week in and week out really wouldn't be possible because they allow us to go out and get the other sponsors that have contributed and it really becomes a big team effort but more than anything we want to thank this McDonald's team locally for supporting the parents and the students of all these great schools that we cover week in and week out on WHHI's Friday night high school football zone. And I'm going to introduce some of the key people that are responsible uh, for making these local area McDonald's so successful and so supportive in what we do. Uh, we've got John Palmacio. Hi, very nice to be here. We're so happy to be part of this. Well, we're really proud to, to have you part of it. We have Carlos. Yes. How you doing, guys? I'm, I'm happy to be here and see you at the store. Well, we're looking forward to being over there. And Celeste, we appreciate you coming. You've got a good story. You're, you have a child here at Hilton Head High School. Yes, I have a son that goes here at the high school. Well, he must be feeling pretty good, 28-7 at the half. Yes. <laughs> well, well, good. Hey, the, the, the big thing we want to talk about tonight is high school football brings a community together like no other sport that we're aware of. And tonight's a classic example. You got Bluffton coming over the bridge to play Hilton Head. All the parents, relatives, grandparents, brothers, sisters on each side are here. It's the one game everybody looks forward to every single year. And uh, fortunately, through WHHI and, and local area McDonald's stores, we're able to broadcast it to everybody out in the community. So we're having a, uh, a really, really good time out here tonight. Uh, John... You know, you all have two stores on Hilton Head, one in Bluffton, one in Hardyville. And McDonald's has got a lot of good new products out, the Angus Burger. You know, my coffee's left, uh, my, my coffee, my wife has left a coffee store, started to go to McDonald's to buy your coffee. My wife, too. And, you know, and we're glad to have her there with us. Um, and, again, one thing I wanted to point out is you left out that Carlos is a Bluffton fan, a resident of Bluffton. Um, and we are sponsors of the Bluffton area as well. But again, thank you for having us. The Angus Burger, the McCafe, all those things. We appreciate what the parents and the children of the community do. We really appreciate their business. And that's one of the reasons why we're sponsored. We want to try and give back to the community. Well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you one other thing that, that I didn't mention earlier. And uh, that is, Carlos, when my family's down here in Hilton Head and my son sees the McDonald's, he says, Happy Meal. He's ready for the Happy Meal. That's what it is, being. You know and mean? all of a sudden, he's real happy. <laughs> yes, that's why we are. That's I mean, right. That's right. This well, is the point to make them happy and have them come with the kid. You know? Well, we appreciate you all taking time, coming up here tonight, supporting the Friday Night High School Football Zone for ten weeks. Uh, it's been a great season. It's year two for WHHI. Every year, we're going to try to make it better. And through the support of you and your stores and your company and our other sponsors as well, uh, I think we're doing that. One thing I wanted to add, if it's okay, for the Beaufort County children, next weekend we're doing a fundraiser on Hilton Head Island at the Weston. If anyone wants more information, please come to one of the McDonald's. We're doing a charity tournament for the children, and we're trying to help. Uh, so, again, if you are interested, please stop by one of the McDonald's for some information. We're having a Texas Hold'em tournament on Friday night and a golf tournament on Saturday. We would love your support to try and help, again, the children of Beaufort County. And, and don't forget, folks, there's two stores on Hilton Head Island, one in Bluffton and one over in Hardyville. And, John, you had one of the things, you know, your wife was going to come tonight, a little bit sidetracked with a sickness in the family. Yes, unfortunately, my wife, Monique, who's an operator with me and very involved in the business, my little daughter wasn't feeling well, so she was unable to make it tonight. But she's home rooting on the, on, on the team. Well, I'll tell you what, kids win every time, and all these kids win, and all the parents win. We want to thank all of you for coming up again for halftime. And we're going to uh, start the second half in uh, not too long and look forward to the third quarter kickoff in just a little bit from the Friday night high school football zone on WHHI TV. Yeah, I guess they're stars and then they're superstars. Um, I'm bringing value to the team. I think that's what's most, it was the most, yeah. You bring my um, dumps? Yeah. Got you right here, baby. Uh, are you bringing value? That's what I'm bringing to the team. Now at McDonald's, get a double cheeseburger extra value meal for only $2.99. That's a 100% all beef double cheeseburger, a medium fries, and a medium Coke. We get really hungry around here, and when that happens, I go get the food. Hilton Head Glidden Paint Store on New Orleans Road has been serving the island's professional and do-it-yourself painters for 25 years. Owned by Islanders David and Jeannie Harder, Along with their Bluffton and Beaufort Glidden stores, they are big enough to give you competitive prices 
and experienced enough to save you time and money by helping you do your paint job right the first time. Whether you are a high volume contractor or matching the color in a pillow, personal attention and service is the cornerstone of their success. Proudly serving Hilton Head for over seven years, whether you are looking to celebrate a special occasion, take the family out to dinner, or catch your favorite sporting team on one of our 12 televisions, Mellow Mushroom is the place to be. We offer gourmet pizzas, gigantic calzones, fresh hoagies, and crisp cold salads seven days a week. Check out our full service bar featuring over 100 different beers, so next time the mood strikes, tell your friends and family. Torque Athletic Club has changed the local fitness landscape forever. And along with Tan Go Tanning, we are the ultimate place to be. With 59 group fitness classes a week and over half a million dollars of brand new equipment, Torque has a juice bar, free childcare, and free membership specials. And sign up for Tan Go Tanning to get state of the art equipment with a wide variety of lotions and membership programs for everyone. Torque Athletic Club and Tan Go Tanning, right near Sea Turtle Cinemas in Bluffton. This is Count Jacula. All you little goblins and ghouls need to visit the Salty Dog Haunted Village this Saturday for some trick-or-treating fun and backyard barbecue. There'll be mostly live entertainment and a kid's costume contest. Beating time is around sundown and the contest starts at 7. I'll be waiting. <laughs> Big, whatever, bring it on. Guys live their life a little differently. And we get it. So we built sport clips exclusively for you. We know happiness is a big screen TV, a legendary hot steam towel, a relaxing neck and shoulder massage, and hair that always looks great. Sport clips. It's good to be a guy. Find the store near you and ask for our MVP treatment. Welcome back to halftime at Bridge Bowl for Hilton Head and Bluffton High School. And with me is Tim Wood, Chuck Zapek, your play-by-play -play and color guys for the 2009 season and 2008 season. It's year two, which we're wrapping up. but uh, Not too shabby, huh? No, sir? and I'm going to tell you something, folks. We are very lucky at WHHI to have two gentlemen that spend as much time preparing for each one of these high school football games to give you all some of the detail and information that you're able to get because these guys could be calling Division I AA college games. I assure you, they do a great job. We're really glad to have you part of the WHHI team. And, you know, let's look at the first half. Even though it's 28-7, Hilton Head, uh, I saw a lot of big plays out there, Tim. I saw a Bluffton team that is not quitting. Not quitting at all. Unbelievable momentum shifts there at the end of the first half. Bluffton has the chance to get within seven. They're driving down the field. Morrow for Hilton Head intercepts. And then all of a sudden, your, your, your play of the game, I mean, there's been a ton of them, but the play of, of the end of the half, Michael Fodia, 67 yards, yeah. Chuck, from, from uh, Jeff Homat. Well, your offense is typically the, the, the team that sets the momentum for your team. So you're able to get that out of big plays. And coming into any football game, what you typically look for are eight big plays every game. A pass over 20 yards, a run over 15 yards. That's a big play. And we've probably seen half a dozen of big plays from Hilton Head so far tonight. 80 yards? Yep. 67 yards? They're all over 20. 33 yards. <laughs> that's the, that's Unbelievable, it. John. Yeah. Big plays equal usually big wins. And that's certainly been the case in the first half tonight. And uh, But you know what I love about high school football? And you all see it every week. The effort and energy these kids give week in and week out. You know, there's no money involved. There, there's nothing but just pride. And and fighting for their schools and their, their families and their friends. And... Tonight, that's magnified because the rivalry between these two teams, and uh, it's really fun to watch. I mean, we saw a run by one of the Bluffton kids down there that he broke 
five tackles. To, he was he was tackled for a loss, and he ended up getting about eight eight yards, and he broke five tackles. Maybe one of the best runs of the year. Zach Frazier, unbelievable. Yeah, it is. It's, and, John, as you well know, today it's a full all-year commitment to football. And the off-season training programs they have, if you're not involved in wrestling or basketball or some other sport, then you're going to be in the, in the training program. Both schools have a great weightlifting program. And when they get, and they also have spring practice. That's something maybe our viewers will know in South Carolina. They do have a spring ball practice here uh, in the state. So I think it contributes to just the um, ability to put together teams as well as we see them executing tonight. Well, one thing, too, uh, Tim and I were talking about earlier, Bluffton, folks, has really improved a lot this year. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Started out 0-3. Won three home games under Coach Jeremy West. So much on the line between these two schools. I mean, you talk to these kids during the week. You know, they're only five way, five years away from separating. They separated five years ago. All these kids playing grew up playing against each other in 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 in, in little league ball, and now that they're they're fighting each other in this bridge bowl, pride on the line, playoff implications on the line. So much on the line here as we start the second half. Let's get ready for the second half, folks. And when we come back, Tim and Chuck will take you through the second half of Bridge Bowl 4, Hilton Head High in Bluffton. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Larry O'Sullivan. And I'm Brad O'Sullivan. And we're O'Sullivan Equipment and Supply. We are your number one source for any and all of your janitorial equipment and supply needs. We specialize in equipment and supplying hospital and healthcare warehouse, industrial, and commercial cleaning businesses. We remedy all continuous cleaning service needs, including all floor types, windows, water damage, odor, and mildew. For the absolute best prices on equipment and supplies anywhere, please contact Larry or Brad O'Sullivan. We, we will, will save, save you money and, and time. Welcome to the Blind Cake Saloon. Come in and enjoy an American upscale bar with the best in dancing, live music, two full bars, billiards lounge, and the best bar food in Bluffton. So whether you're coming in to hang out and have a beer, or if you're ready for a night out on the town, come on in and see what the buzz is all about at the Blind Pig Saloon. Whether you want a healthier home, have high energy bill concerns, need to schedule a repair, or are ready for system maintenance, go to Mark's Heating and Cooling, where their success is due to a great staff, a few sound business principles, lots of technical training, and an honest desire to please. Give them a call at 681-2350 or go to their website, MarksHeatingAndAir.com. And while you're there, cast your vote for the local charity that you would like to see win this month's $500 donation. When you call, they'll be there. Mark's Heating and Cooling. For the past 19 years, our family has been serving your family with all your packing and shipping needs. We've shipped the care packages to camp, dorm trunks to college, the party favors for the wedding, and eventually even the crib and the rocking chair. We've made color copies for your class projects, we've typeset your resume, printed your baby announcements, party invitations, graduation announcements, and wedding invitations. We have been a proud supporter of our community. From our family to yours, thanks for the opportunity to serve you through the years. Hilton Head Glidden Paint Store on New Orleans Road has been serving the island's professional and do-it-yourself painters for 25 years. Owned by Islanders David and Jeannie Harder, along with their Bluffton and Beaufort Glidden stores, they are big enough to give you competitive prices and experienced enough to save you time and money by helping you do your paint job right the first time. Whether you are a high volume contractor or matching the color in a pillow, personal attention and service is the cornerstone of their success.
proudly serving Hilton Head for over seven years. Whether you are looking to celebrate a special occasion, take the family out to dinner, or catch your favorite sporting team on one of our 12 televisions, Mellow Mushroom is the place to be. We offer gourmet pizzas, gigantic calzones, fresh hoagies, and crisp cold salad seven days a week. Check out our full service bar featuring over 100 different tiers. So next time the mood strikes, tell your friends and family. Torque Athletic Club has changed the local fitness landscape forever. And along with Tan Go Tanning, we are the ultimate place to be. With 59 group fitness classes a week and over half a million dollars of brand new equipment, Torque has a juice bar, free childcare, and free membership specials. And sign up for Tan Go Tanning to get state of the art equipment with a wide variety of lotions and membership programs for everyone. Torque Athletic Club and Tan Go Tanning, right near Sea Turtle Cinemas in Bluffton. I guess there's stars and then there's superstars. Um, I'm bringing value to the team. I think that's what's most, hey, what's the most, yeah. You bring my um, dunks? Yeah. Got you right here, baby. Uh, Are you bringing value? That's what I'm bringing to the team. Now at McDonald's, get a double cheeseburger extra value meal for only $2.99. That's a 100% all beef double cheeseburger, a medium fries and a medium Coke. We get really hungry around here. And when that happens, I go get the food. This is Count Jacula. All you little goblins and ghouls need to visit the Salty Dog Haunted Village this Saturday for some trick-or-treating fun and backyard barbecue. There'll be mostly live entertainment and a kid's costume contest. Beating time is around sundown and the contest starts at 7. I'll be waiting. <laughs> H&H &H Auto Service is the home of the free inspection. H&H &H has been voted number one on Hilton Head Island and Small Business of the Year. H&H &H provides quality service for alignments, preventative and routine maintenance, and much more. Looking for an affordable car? H&H &H Auto is your full service dealer. All pre-owned cars are certified and come with a warranty. Everybody rides at H&H &H Auto because they finance in-house. Whether your car needs to look its best, run its best, or if you just need a new one, count on H&H &H to get you where you need to go. Back here on the Friday Night Football Zone, Tim Wood, Chuck Zapek. Want to thank our station owner, John Byrne, for anchoring things there at the halftime for us. Always a pleasure to have him up in the booth. Gave us a break. Absolutely. <laughs> Gave us a break to chase down some stats, get a little, little oxygen. That was, that was quite the first half. It was. I, and I think you have some stats for us too, don't you? I'll tell you what. Uh, if you're Jeff Homad... You just had a game of your life <laughs> in a half. Four for eight, 181 yards, three touchdown passes, 80, 67, and 33 yards. Unbelievable first half of offense for the Seahawks, capitalizing in all the right spots. That sounds like Peyton Manning numbers right there, Tim. Well, I got a, I got a, a tweet saying, hope somebody told the Bobcats the uh, Battery Creek Lake Marion score. It's 42-6 Battery Creek at the half. That's worst case scenario for the Bobcats. They have to win this game. So kickoff for the second half, down to the 10-yard line, taken by Morrow. Morrow spins away from a tackler, tac tackle, still fighting, gets out to the 16-yard line. Good coverage that time by the Bobcats. A little bit more difficult than it looks like, even though the ball was mishandled a little bit by Morrow. But uh, what you need to do is corral that ball carrier. A lot of gang tackling, and that's how you are able to discourage long runbacks. Get the whole gang involved, and that's what they did that time. So, Jeff Homad leading the offense. Michael Fodia 
the fullback, the halfback disguised as a fullback back there with Jenkins. And looks like the Bobcats jumped to start the second half. Well, they're anxious, all right. One of our better players, Steven Sapanek, who goes both ways in the offensive and defensive line, was drawn off sides. That's a shame. He's played a great game. So the Seahawks get a little help here to start the second half. Going to be first and five now as Homat is under center. Pitch out to Jenkins. Jenkins follows his blockers. First down and more out to the 33-yard line goes Lawrence Jenkins. Great job that time by number 64. That's the right offensive tackle. Marcus Johnson, who leads the way, able to pin down the defensive end and then continue on downfield, knocking away would-be tacklers. Nice job by Johnson, first, the right tackle. First and 10 for the Seahawks on the Jenkins run. Home at under center. Fodia and Jenkins back. Homad fakes the pitch out, turns around, throws to Morrow. Morrow fighting over midfield to the Bluffton, 49. Another first down for the Seahawks. And another well-executed play by the Seahawks offense this time. Looks like they spent a lot of time and effort on those screen plays. They finished off the first half with the screen play, middle screen to Fodia. And that was it. went for the long touchdown. This time they throw a little bubble screen to the outside receiver who makes a great effort and good blocking downfield. Left offensive tackle that time. Hunter Anderson got out and led the way. Man down on the field for the Seahawks. Now, who was that? That was the ball carrier. He took a real hard hit at the end of the play and got drilled into the ground. That's Clifford Morrow. He is still down. Injury on the field here with 11.15 to go here in the third. Well, while we got, while yep. we got a second, I want to thank one of our sponsors, the Salty Dog Cafe. Get your Salty Dog t-shirt at the Salty Dog t-shirt factory located at South Beach Marina or on Arrow Road. Also available anytime at www.saltydog.com. Salty Dog Cafe t-shirts will suit you to a T. Well, they are helping Morrow up off the field. A good start up to this point before the injury here for the Seahawks to start the second half. Well, they had a penalty in that play, which erased that uh, game by Morrow. And that all goes off or not. And now they're going to have a first and... 13 from their own 31-yard line, Tim. Wynn, once again, is picking up here from le right to left. Seahawks coming from uh, offense, lining up over the ball from our left to right. So Morrow up under his own power, jogs off the field. That's a good sign for the Seahawks. So first and 13 for Hilton Head. Pitch out to Jenkins. Jenkins fights for the corner. He is taken out about the 36-yard line by B.J. Kitty. Yeah, Kitty comes up from his free safety position, does a great job. Number one, the junior, uses all 80, 180 pounds of his body weight to force, him, force the runner out of bounds, but that was just a great pursuit by him. So the Seahawks second down on their own 36. Second and six, Homad under center. Fodia and Jenkins back inside handoff to Fodia. Fodia still on his feet out to the 45. That's Michael Fodia again. Looks like he's got the first down yardage. Wow, Fodia is just money tonight, Tim, as he was three weeks ago the last time we saw the Seahawks play here. Fodia just making all the difference up the middle on that little, just a little give play. Keeps you off balance, makes you play responsibilities, and if you're not playing good team de defense, that's what's going to happen to you. They're going to be able to pick up yardage. He's already got a 67-yard touchdown reception and gets the first down for the Seahawks. Jenkins on first down, gets the corner. He's got one man to beat down the sideline. He's pushed out of bounds at 
Let's see where they push him out. No, he was at about the 35, but nonetheless, another first down for the Seahawks. Oh, you can see he just outruns all the defenders this time. That come into the tonight's game, Tim, that's what we thought would be the difference was the speed of the perimeter players for the Seahawks, and that's how they started the first half out, and now they're continuing the second half. That speed is just you making all the difference. So another first down. For the Seahawks, they are at the Bluffton 35, first and 10. Ten and a half minutes to go here in the third quarter. Homad fakes the pitch out, goes to Frazier on the pass. Frazier down to about the 20-yard. No, they're going to mark it down at the 18-yard line. Another first down for Hilton Head. Where did Jeff Homard come from? I mean, this is just, he's just so effective right here between the... Um, Offense and defense, I mean, uh, between running and passing. So another first down for Hilton Head. Inside the red zone, go the Seahawks at the 18-yard line. First and 10, Hilton Head Island. Homad, Homad under center. Fodia and Jenkins. Jenkins gets the handoff. Jenkins down inside the 15 to the 12. Boy, impressive drive here. That offensive line is just blowing Bluffton off the ball, led by Florence Bryan, the center. And then you got Jack Dwayne, number 62, the right guard. Left guard, Zachary Kiritsi. Hunter Anderson at left tackle. And the right tackle, Marcus Johnson, who we mentioned earlier. They're doing quite the job up front for the running game for the Seahawks. This is Bobcats defense, hands on hips. They're puffing. 12 yards to go here for the Seahawks. Pitch out to number 12, Jenkins. Jenkins fights for the corner. Nice tackle. No, Jenkins still on his feet. Jenkins cuts back. Wow. Je no give up in Lawrence <laughs> Jenkins. It's a highlight film on one play where you don't get anything. Watch these moves. He's able to avoid three tacklers. They still can't bring him down. They're, they're biting at his ankles. He's able to regain his balance and make a move back into the middle of the field. He didn't lose anything. Tell you that great run there, twenty-five yard run, four yards net, but big third down, Tim. Real big third down. Bluffton needs a stop. Homad fakes run, goes pass. He's got his man, Victor Frazier. Frazier reaches for the end zone, doesn't Look get it, this. but he gets a first down. Look at Homad. Watch this. He just steps up. Fraser just runs a little stop pattern on the outside. He puts the ball to the outside shoulder. He's covered, but he puts it where the defender isn't. It's like throwing a ball into the low post in basketball. Man's covered. He puts it right, at, right on the outside number. What a throw by Jeff Homad. He is having the game of his career thus far, and, and he has led the Seahawks two yards from a 28-point 28 28-point lead. Jenkins, he's got it. Touchdown, two-yard touchdown run. Lawrence Jenkins, his second run of the night. You see him just barreling into the end zone, and the Seahawks take a 34-7 lead. Extra point pending, but all things rosy here for the men in blue and white. Uh, the guy's doing the job up front. Jack Dwayne, Marcus Johnson, right guard, right tackle. That's where this Coach Singleton wanted to run the football, and those guys delivered tonight. Kick is up. It's good. 35-7, 8.22 to go here in the third. Take a break here on the Friday Night Football Zone. WHHI-TV. Welcome to the Blind Pig Saloon. Come in and enjoy an upscale American bar featuring the best in local and regional live music, dancing, two pool bars, billiards lounge, and the best bar food in Bluffton. So whether you're coming in to hang out and have a beer, or you're ready for a night out on the town, come in and see what all the buzz is about at the Blind Pig Saloon. Nice. Back here on the Friday Night Football <laughs> Zone, Tim Wood, Chuck Z Zapek, Bridge Bowl 4. A four-score deficit now for the Bobcats. 35-7 lead for the Seahawks. And Tim, they did that drive, the wow. Seahawks, without any trickery. Yeah. In the first quarter, we saw some trick plays, some flea flickers, and a, and a, co a couple uh, fake reverses and such. This time they did it just 
up the middle and with well executed. We're coming at you. Stop us, right? Yep. All right, kickoff to the five. Timmy Smith has it. Makes a cutback. Gets out to the 20, 25, 30. Taken down. Takes a good hit by Jaquan Cohen at the 35-yard line. So a good run back for Timmy Smith. It was too. Smart move by Smith. As you see here, he catches the ball. The return is right. That's where they want to do it. But Smith says there's too many play people that way. Reverses his direction, starts heading down, and gets all he can going vertical, and he makes a great run here to bring the ball out all the way to the 35-yard line of Bluffton. Well, the Bobcats are down 28 here. Battery Creek is up by 36 against Lake Marion. Worst-case scenario playoff picture right now for the Bobcats as they start this drive. Combs goes deep for Powell. He's open. He's got him. Did he get down in bounds? Yeah, it's a catch. They say yes at the 35. So... 35 to 35 goes Alfonso Powell for a uh, quick math. 30 what a strike. throw by Ryan Combs. Yeah. Great throw. And this time he's got Morrow, who they re, uh, they substituted back into the lineup to stay with Powell. But a beautiful throw by Ryan Combs that time, putting it on the outside shoulder just where you have to throw that fade route. And he let uh, Powell make the make the catch. You know, this is kind of like Sabathia Lee or uh, Pedro <laughs> Burnett. Uh, Combs having a pretty good game in his in his return here, oh, but he is too. Combs had having a much better one. So first and ten, another good strike from Combs. This time he hits uh, number twelve, Stephen Bradley. Another first down for the Bobcats. They are driving. Wow, this time I feel like we're calling basketball here. I know it, it, <laughs> this is a little run and shoot offense they got going here. Little different passing game we saw before. They were, we've. Earlier this year when Combs was a quarterback, there was a lot more play-action passes and there was more slower developing passes. Here they're going with a quick three-step drop and they're getting rid of the ball uh, as fast as they can. And they're doing it effectively. Combs checks in with Zach Frazier. Going to the air again. He's got Frazier. Frazier cuts down to the 20. Takes a couple of tacklers Ooh. down to the 16-yard line, goes Zach Frazier. Well, what has Ryan Combs been doing all year? I this know. is a perfect three-step drop. If you if, if we get the replay here, you'll see. One, two, three, and the ball's out of there. Doesn't give the defense a chance to get too much pressure on you. And your offensive receivers just turn and make the catch. Well, while we got a second, want to thank another one of our sponsors, H H Auto, customer friendly, guaranteed quality, the number one place for auto sales and service on Hilton Head. That's H H Auto. Second and three, Combs going, trying to go to the air, scrambling, throws it away. A smart play there by Combs as he had three Seahawks defenders after him. Well, he did too. This time he held the ball. He took the three step drop. Three step drop was forced to bring the ball down, and then he started his scramble. You know, that's what the whole West Coast offense is based on, is a three-step drop. And, and it really what it allows the quarterback to do is don't have to worry about reading the defense. It allows him to go for options. If the first option is there, you take it, and you just work your way down to the second and third. And that's, that seems to be what's working for Bluffton right now. Three-step drop, look at your options, don't worry about reading the defense. Third and three, big play for the Bobcats. Cross the middle, incomplete to Desmond Jenkins. So fourth and three now. Combs looking for the play. Down 28. They will go for it on fourth down. Well, you know, he, he, he looked to Taylor McDonald to throw the ball, but he got flat or um, Powell to throw the ball. Number 15, Le Lamon Williams came over and flattened him. Had he thrown the ball, however... I think they might have called pass interference to him. He came off that option and tried to look for the other for the tight end. Fourth and three. They're going for it. Frazier powers in. Looks like he's got it down to the 10-yard line. He has the first down. So it'll be first and goal for the Bobcats. Wow. Whenever they have a successful run, just look for number 71. He's usually the man doing the, the heavy lifting inside. That's Phillip Scott, I think their best lineman. Uh, we've seen him play three times this year. Number 71, he gets the job done. He is a beast. First and goal, hand off to Frazier. Frazier taken down by, it looks like Victor Frazier was in on the pressure. 
Victor Frazier. How about all the whole team? This is a team meeting being held at the 12-yard line right here. <laughs> Look how they finish it up. You've got 10 guys. They just had the defensive meeting with Coach Merrick out on the field. Nice line. I like that. <laughs> First, second and goal for the Bobcats. Combs under center. Combs going to the end zone. Right he at touchdown. the end zone. Powell, touchdown, Bobcats. Here it is. Three-step drop. Flag on the play. Ruffing Could be a late hit. Yeah, it, it is. is. So that will be a touchdown. Wow. As you see here. He what a throw. Powell. What a throw. There it is. West Coast offense, folks. There it is. Three-step drop. Call it what you want it. See how you want it done. But it's all based on options. Your first option there, take it. And it was. He looked for the shortest the first option in the West Coast offense is the shortest throw for the longest gain, which is exactly what he did. Now, will they mark this off on the kickoff? Oh, wow. Chop block. It's coming back. I thought it was rough oh, on the passer. Oh, so did I. It's coming back. Oh, my. Wow. That is called against the Bobcats. Oh. So. Let's see if we see the chop block here. I don't know about that. They called it right in front of the quarterback. Wow. Oh, that's. That's horrible. That, that would that would be. Uh, oh, that's a shame. That would be ticky tacky. He I was think. not engaged. That's that defensive lineman had come free up the middle, and the little running back all he could do. Oh my goodness! That Number is a twenty-three huge call here. Makes the chop, makes the block. Zach Fraser takes on a big lineman where he should, right down at the knees, and they call it as a chop. So second and goal here for oh, the Bobcats. Tough luck. A hey. de deflating call, but you still got to play. Like I tell my, my girls in tennis, you got to be able to win every point twice. Let's see if they can do it twice. Combs going to go to the end zone for Powell again. He's got him. Does he come down with it? He does. Combs to Powell. Well, second try. They gotta win twice. every point. You gotta got to win every point twice, Tim. 25-yard throw. Never know. Combs to Powell. A perfect strike. Wow. What a throw by Jeff. Combs. Wow. Unbelievable. And a, what a catch by Powell. We've not seen him with this much athleticism before. He's having a, quite a day himself. Rodriguez on for the extra point. Combs holding. Little jump. No flag kick up. It is good. So 528 to go. 35-14. Seahawks still ahead here on the Friday Night Football Zone. On WHHI-TV. Hi, I'm Larry O'Sullivan. And I'm Brad O'Sullivan. And we're O'Sullivan Equipment and Supply. We are your number one source for any and all of your janitorial equipment and supply needs. We specialize in equipment and supplying hospital and healthcare, warehouse, industrial, and commercial cleaning businesses. We remedy all continuous cleaning service needs, including all floor types, windows, water damage, odor, and milky. For the absolute best prices on equipment and supplies anywhere, please contact Larry or Brad O'Sullivan. We, we will, will save, save you money, money and, and time. time. Well, Bobcats back on the scoreboard. Cut it to a three-score deficit, 35-14 with 5.28 to go here in the third quarter. Bridge Bowl 4. On the Friday Night Football Zone, Tim Wood, Chuck Zapek here from the Hawks Nest. Bobcats get the momentum back as, as the teams exchange uh, touchdowns to start Onside the, kick, start Tim. The Onside half. kick. Onside kick coming a little too far, taken by Jenkins at the 26. Still on his feet. Jenkins out to the 31. So uh, while we got a second here, I want to thank one of our sponsors, McDonald's Restaurants of Bluffton and Hilton Head. Stop by after the game and tackle one of McDonald's new thick and tasty third pound Angus burgers and world famous fries. You'll be loving it. Well, can the Bobcats make a defensive stop? Nobody has here to start the third. It's got to come from the four down linemen. Their interior linemen have to be able to make a, put some pressure on the quarterback. Homad pitch out to Jenkins. Jenkins cuts back, still on his feet. 
out to about the 37-yard line. So some positive yardage on first down. Something out of nothing for you know, Jenkins. Nice move by Jenkins, but sooner or later, you got to start going north and south, and you got to stop this spinning. This is going to result in, a, in either a penalty because the linemen are blocking one way and he goes the other way, or he's going to get hit from behind unexpectedly. I realize he's making great efforts, but sometimes you also have to know as a running back to just go down and get what you can. That's a danger. That'll be a dangerous play if you start running it in traffic like that. Second and five for the Seahawks. Two men in the backfield hand off to Fodia. Fodia first down and more out to the Seahawks' 46-yard line goes Michael Fodia. You know, you, you, you go and you wonder, how can just a little hand up the middle make so much yardage? Can't the other team stop it? The reason why they can't stop it is there's two double teams occurring, one on the nose guard, they go right after that, and then they get another one on the, on the defensive end, and you're in a three-man alignment, so two of the uh, three linemen are made ineffective right there, and then you take on the fullback or take on the linebacker, that's a great great job. Great uh, running a so very simple play for big yardage. First and ten for the Hawks. Homad fakes run. Pass to Frazier. Frazier still on his feet down to the Bluffton. 34-yard line goes Victor Frazier. Watch this pass. The, the wide receiver, Frazier, just goes out, runs a stop route, turns, and then starts moving to the outside. Homeward puts it right on the outside number. They catch Bluffton in his own defense. That's good. That's good recognition by the quarterback, seeing where the uh, free safety was to the strong side or the strong side safety, and he, and good recognition by the wide receiver and the quarterback to see that that was the route that was open against that zone defense. First and ten for the Seahawks at the Bluffton 34. Jenkins with the handoff going nowhere on first down. Well, I'll tell you what, Victor Frazier gave the Bobcats to Bolton Born Bateria, told the Island Packet. On Thursday, we want it more. When you're a senior, you've got to get it done. We don't want to lose the Bridge Bowl our senior year. That was in response to why are you guys more emotionally ready for this game? And Frazier has backed up all his statements so far. Well, I'll tell you, just backed up the, uh, the defensive statement for Bluffton with Steven Sapanek, number 50, the nose guard. He was able to shed two blockers and make that tackle at the line of scrimmage. Fakes the pitch on second down. Pass to Mora Moore, still on his feet. 10 5 touchdown. Seahawks. Another huge strike, a 33 yard touchdown pass. Jeff Homad to Clifford Morrow. They haven't, Bluffton has not defensed this play all night, Tim. This must be the sixth or seventh time they've run it, though, the quick flanker screen at the Morrow. But a, give credit, a good job on execution. This is just purely good execution. You know what bothers me about that play right there at the end, though, Chuck? What's that? Bluffton defenders just stopped running at the 10-yard line once once he got past. I mean, I don't know. Maybe that's just me. I just want to see effort until he's in the end zone. They're tired. They are. They're tired. Extra point up, 42-14. Seahawks strike back, 321 to go here in the third. Take a break here on the Friday Night Football Zone. On WHHI-TV. Whether you want a healthier home, have high energy bill concerns, need to schedule a repair, or are ready for system maintenance, go to Mark's Heating and Cooling, where their success is due to a great staff, a few sound business principles, lots of technical training, and an honest desire to please. Give them a call at 681-2350 or go to their website, MarksHeatingAndAir.com. And while you're there, cast your vote for the local charity that you would like to see win this month's $500 donation. When you call, they'll be there. Mark's Heating and Cooling. to 14 the Seahawks up by 28 if you're just joining us a lot of big strikes by Jeff Homad the Seahawks quarterback S six scores on the board by the Seahawks 42 14 your score bridge bowl four kickoff Timmy Smith takes it out to the 33 so we've seen four touchdowns of 30 yards or more Chuck two 33-yard passes, one 67-yard screen pass to Michael Fodia, and an 80-yard strike 
down the sideline to Victor Frazier. Tim, we got to give a lot of credit to the coaching staff and to uh, and to the quarterback Jeff Homad. Uh, those the the reason why they're having so much success is that not only the play calling but the pre snap reads that the quarterback is making, recognizing what the coverages are, and be able to execute and adjust. And the wide receivers are adjusting their patterns to the defenses that are they see in front of them. Do Great the Bobcats have an answer? Not here on first down as it is nearly intercepted by Victor Frazier. Calling that name on both sides of the ball. He is everywhere tonight. He goes up top for B.J. Kitty. One thing we should mention, Bluffton is missing one of their skilled or perimeter players in Jimmy Tillman tonight who's not in the lineup. Absolutely. Took a hard hit against North Charleston. Still not able to get back in the lineup. So second and ten here for the Bobcats. Combs under center. One man in the backfield. Combs will go to the pass again. Nearly intercepted again by number 21 this time. MJ Simmons for the Seahawks. Well, Combs getting a little dicey here. Well, th that was a discombobulated play by the whole entire offensive team that time, Tim. You'll see that even the wide receivers are tired and they're not, run and they're not running their routes. And that's the reason why uh, the play looked a little disheveled there. But Ryan Combs is having some success throwing the ball tonight using the short, using the three-set drop and getting the ball out to the predetermined receivers. Third and ten for the Bobcats. Big drop for Combs. Combs overthrows Smith. So fourth and ten now for the Bobcats. Down four scores. Well, you can see on that play the lack of, of Bluffton being able to, uh, to run uh, from out of a passing game to run the middle screen. They've not been a passing team for the last uh, six, seven games. They've gone to that wing T flex bone offense with Desmond Jenkins at quarterback. Now where they find themselves so far behind, they don't execute quite as well. Kick off. It's a high one. Down to the 30-yard line. Taken by Morrow. Morrow cuts back to the 40-45. Spins, still on his feet, taken down at the 45. Well, the, now they'll mark it at the 40, 45-yard line. So a good run back by Morrow. And they spin him unceremoniously down to the ground rather hard. Don't want to start seeing that. These two teams, they know each other very well. A lot of these players grew up together, played Youth football together. Some of them you know, played middle school, even in the early stages of high school. They've done a lot of flip-flopping between the, the bridges. So they know each other well. First and ten for the Seahawks. Home at under center. Fakes to Fodia, gives it to Jenkins. Jenkins fights forward to about the 49-yard line goes Lawrence Jenkins. Well, this is a, uh, the Seahawks are a team that lost 14 starters. And they were playing a lot of young players, particularly on defense uh, this year. And it took them for a while to gel. Plus, when they started off the season, Tim, if you remember, they had four quarterbacks they were shuffling in and out of the lineup. Now that they've settled on Jeff Omad the last four games, what a difference this offense has made. I can see why they're on a three-game winning streak about to be four. Second and five, Omad under center. Fakes to Jenkins, gets him at the 40. Jenkins still on his feet down to the 27-yard line. This is on the verge of getting really out of hand here, Chuck. Oh, it is now, too. They do a good job this time. Homad comes down the line, runs the down-the-line option to perfection after faking to the fullback, is able to pitch the ball, and that's what you don't want to do is have the ball pitched to the trail man. You want to make the quarterback run laterally with the football, not a back that can get up and down the field vertically. So first and 10 inside Bobcats territory, 158 to go here in the third. Home at under center. He's got Fodia and Jenkins in the backfield. Inside handoff to Fodia. Fodia fighting down into the red zone, down to the 11-yard uh, line goes Michael Fodia. Yeah, if something doesn't happen here quickly for the Bobcats, this could get out of hand in a hurry here. Great job this time after running the down the line option with the pitch. Then they come back with just the lead, with just a handoff to the fullback up the middle, right up the gut. 
Another first down for the Seahawks. Fodia up near 150 yards now in all-purpose yards. Homad fakes run, passes out to Quentin Smalls, and Smalls is down. I'll see where they mark it. They mark it at about the seven yard line. Good job by the coaching staff of the Seahawks going back to plays that have worked in the past. And that's why you chart plays during the game. They usually is a coach spotting your own offense and they're, spot and they're charting which plays have worked against the defense. And that's the reason why you're seeing these same repetitive plays. Second and goal, two in the backfield. Homad pitches out to Jenkins. Jenkins follows his blockers outside. Oh, he had the he had the corner, he had the pylon, but he trips at the three yard line. So the field, about the only thing stopping <laughs> the Seahawks right now. No, the four yard line. Yeah, <laughs> and the field that just stopped them there. Well, while we got a second, want to give you an update. Good news from Northwood Academy. Christian Academy makes a defensive stop and then scores on a touchdown run by Eric Farr. He's back for the Eagles. They take a 17-3 lead with 11.53 to go. For, and here, another touchdown for Lawrence Jenkins. His third running touchdown of the game. 22.3 seconds to go here in the third. For entertainment purposes only, if you had, if you were... Going over under, if you had the over, you might be in luck. 48 to 14 now. Well, Tim, I said earlier in the game it was going to be a high-scoring game. Both offenses have had a chance to gel throughout the season. What kept these teams from uh, or, or from Hilton Head High was their defense Oh, and, and earlier in the year. Now, what was that? That was a little trickery there yeah, on the extra shuttle point. Pass. Shuttle, shuttle pass, did they get it? Well, they tried it. But it was no good. Well, I'll tell you. We'll talk about that when we get back. <laughs> 22.3 seconds to go here in the third. 48-14. Seahawks ahead on the Friday Night Football Zone. On WHHI-TV. Guys live their life a little differently. <laughs> And we get it. So we built Sport Clips exclusively for you. We know happiness is a big screen TV, a legendary hot steam towel, a relaxing neck and shoulder massage, and hair that always looks great. Sport Clips. It's good to be a guy. Find the store near you and ask for our MVP treatment. Seahawks go up 48-14. Game well in hand. Kickoff coming. I guess Coach Singleton didn't like the number 49. Yeah, we'll wait for that here after the kick. L low liner down to the 10 yard line. Taken by Smith. Smith up the sideline to the 43 yard line. Well, Chuck, all right, you're up 34 points and you go for some trickery for a two-point conversion. With a shuttle pass from the holder to the wingback who crosses over behind the center. I, <laughs> that's I, think somebody that's might, I think somebody might remember that play. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a Georgia, Florida <laughs> first quarter touchdown celebration type of memory right there. Exactly. Well, when you're, when you're the Seahawks and you've owned this series... They don't have to worry about retribution because they've owned the series and they're owning tonight. Combs going to go to the air on first down, low, incomplete to Jenkins. Well, they're losing a little bit of a cohesion right now on offense. While well, we got a second, one want to thank another one of our sponsors, Palmetto Exterminators and Palmetto Mosquito Control. Family owned and oper operated, protecting people's health, their property, and the environment for over 40 years. That's Palmetto Exterminators and Palmetto Mosquito Control. Handoff on first down. Timmy Smith out to midfield. Gets a nice gain on second down. Zach Frazier, Timmy Smith, both those players have really played quite well tonight, Tim. That is the end of the third quarter. 
Seahawks get 20 points in the quarter to go up 48-14 after three quarters here. Bridge Bowl 4 on the Friday Night Football Zone. WHHI TV. For the past 19 years, our family has been serving your family with all your packing and shipping needs. We've shipped the care packages to camp, dorm trunks to college, the party favors for the wedding, and eventually even the crib and the rocking chair. We've made color copies for your class projects, we've typeset your resume, printed your baby announcements, party invitations, graduation announcements, and wedding invitations. We have been a proud supporter of our community. From our family to yours, thanks for the opportunity to serve you through the years. Zone start of the fourth quarter. Seahawks up 34 points, 48-14 here in Bridge Bowl 4. They've won the first three in this series. They are 12 minutes away. Game well in hand from winning their fourth in their fourth straight. Well, wait a second here. Start of the fourth quarter, third down for the Bobcats. Ryan Combs under center. Pitch out to Frazier. Frazier, Timmy Smith cuts back to the Hilton Head 41 yard line. Great run by Timmy Smith this time. He's able to keep his balance, shaking off the tackler behind the line of scrimmage. Nice job. This uh, Bluffton offensive line can block straight ahead. They just can't hold their blocks long enough in pass protection. But they are, they come off the ball really well. We saw them a couple weeks ago do the same thing. When they're running the football, that's when they perform best. First and 10 for the Seahawks at the Seahawks 41. Combs drops back, goes deep. He's got a man in, uh, complete. Nice job. This is a great pre-snap read by Combs. He comes up and sees that Morrow is in a zone coverage. They're in, they're in only a two-deep coverage, and that gives way too much of the field away for him to cover, and that's the reason why they were able to make that completion. Nice job. Nice pre-read snap by the quarterback to see what, was, what he was doing. He came out, read the, read the free safety, looked how deep he was, saw that they were going to be in two-man two coverage. The receiver had to make the same Reed also, good coordination that time. B.J. Kitty with the catch down to the Seahawks, 22. First and 10 again for the Seahawks. Excuse me, down to the 17. Hand off to Frazier on first down. Frazier, 10, inside the 10-yard line to the 8-yard line goes Zach Frazier. This is a different Zach Frazier we saw earlier this year. Was he hurt earlier this year, Tim? Well, it, it, that's, that's the only explanation for me. I mean, this is, what an effort. What an effort. And once again, when you see stuff happening up front, Philip Scott, number 71, is usually the offensive lineman leading the way for the Bobcats. Second and one now. Pitch out to Timmy Smith. He cuts back to about the five-yard line, goes Timmy Smith on second down. It's going to be a first down. Yes, that will get the first down. So first and goal for the Bobcats. Hey, I want to remind you, you want to catch a replay of the game. Saturday morning at 9 a.m., 1 p.m. on Sunday, you can catch the replay of the Friday Night Football Zone here on WHHI-TV. I'll be watching it tomorrow morning. Absolutely. Get Little your coffee. Coffee, croissant, and critique. There you go. Under 10 minutes to go here. Combs to the end zone. Incomplete to Kitty on first and goal. Combs through a little bit behind him. Yeah, a little missed timing there. Between uh, he, Kitty was forced inside. He came a little bit shallower than Combs thought he was going to come because he was forced inside by the defender. Update from Lake Marion. It's over there, folks. Battery Creek. It's not officially over, but it's 54 6. Handoff on second and goal. Stopped around the five. Well, you know, Lake Marion, we saw them against Hilton Head. They looked pretty decent under first year head coach Chris Carter. Gators have been the uh, doormat of the region for many years. Had their moment in the spotlight to 
earn a playoff spot and didn't do much with it. Well, Chris Carter coming down from North Carolina where he turned around a program and turned them into state champions, hoping to do the same thing here. The former Tennessee linebacker from the mid-90s got his job, got, has his work cut out for him here in South Carolina. A good start for him, but third and goal goes to the end zone, does Combs. Incomplete. He goes for Jenkins. Incomplete. So fourth and goal from the three. 9.06 to go here. Bridge Bowl for all Seahawks tonight. As the play comes in from the sideline, Bobcats obviously will go for it. Down 34. Seahawks looking to put the official nail in the coffin. They scored last time on a fourth down play down here, Tim. Pitch out. This time they won't. Zach Frazier can't find any room, and he's taken down at the three-yard line. So the Seahawks will take over at their own three-yard line. What a game tonight from Coach Tim Singleton's crew as they are well on their way to their fourth straight win. Great way to end the regular season for the defending region champion. They won't win the region this year, but they will be the second seed and have a first round home playoff game. So time out here with 8.58 to go in the game. We'll take one as well here on the Friday Night Football Zone. WHHI TV. Yeah, I guess there's stars and then there's superstars. Um, I'm bringing value to the team. I think that's what's most, it was the most, yeah. You bring my um, dunks? Yeah. Got you right here, baby. Uh, uh. Are you bringing value? That's what I'm bringing to the team. Now at McDonald's, get a double cheeseburger extra value meal for only $2.99. That's a 100% all beef double cheeseburger, a medium fries, and a medium Coke. We get really hungry around here. And when that happens, I go get the food. 8.58 to go here in Bridge Bowl 4. You see it on the screen, the 2009 Bridge Bowl. Our presenting sponsor, McDonald's. I'm loving it. Chuck's loving it. Tom Jenkins loving it. Wayne Morris loving it. Tess Rose loving it. Tony, Tony Verga loving it. John Byrne loving it. We're all loving it. <laughs> 8.58 to go here in the game. 48-14 Seahawks deep in their own territory. Jenkins still on his feet. He runs it out to about the nine-yard line. Well, Tim, this is going to be six out of the last seven games that the Seahawks from Hillnet High have won. After starting off the season 0-3, having all sorts of problems, particularly offensively, their defense was playing well, but offensively they're having all sorts of problems. It looks like they've corrected that and they have some cohesion. Jeff Homad has to be the surprise of the year. No doubt. No doubt. 8.24 to go here. Second down, handoff. Jenkins pulled down at the 10. Yeah, I'll tell you, you got to hand it to Tim Singleton. Uh, to, they had a lot of turmoil going on in the team with uh, the quarterback situation. And Singleton, after John Beaver left the team, he goes with Hom Homad, and Homad just, just completely dominating this last half of the season for the Seahawks. You're right, he has too, Tim. We just saw the replay there. Michael Grant, number 54, just dominated the running back too. What a tackle by 54 after shedding the blocker. Homad pitch out on third down at Jenkins. Jenkins following his blockers. He has it. Down the sideline he wow. goes. Lawrence Jenkins, a bunch of Look short at the ref. runs. The ref is going to catch and him. And this time, a... <laughs> oh my goodness. A 90, what, what do we got here? A 85-yard touchdown run by Lawrence Jenkins. Look at Jenkins. Now watch the official, the only person other than a Seahawk can catch him. We're not going to get him in the screen. I've never seen now an official might. run that Let fast. You see his shadow right there. That's the fastest official I've seen yet. He wanted his screen time. He got it. That was, that was impressive. Lawrence Jenkins follows his blockers. Uh, great job by the offensive line that time. Once again, Marcus Johnson, Hunter Anderson, Zachary Kiritsi, Jack Duane, and Florence Bryant 
They're the ones that were able to execute that running play. Just a simple toss around the left end for that 85-yard touchdown run. Kick is up and good. 56-14. 7.30 to go in the game. Take a break here on the Friday Night Football Zone. On WHHI-TV. This is Count Jacula. All you little goblins and ghouls need to visit the Salty Dog Haunted Village this Saturday for some trick-or-treating fun and backyard barbecue. There'll be mostly live entertainment and a kid's costume contest. Feeding time is around sundown and the contest starts at 7. I'll be waiting. <laughs> Back here on the Friday Night Football Zone, 7.30 to go. That extra point was no good, so 55-14 the score. Seahawks up by 41 en route to their biggest bridge bowl win yet. Well, I hope at this point, Chuck, I hope that Coach Tim Singleton takes out the starters because this game's well in hand. He can save his starters for that first-round playoff game and... and and the embarrassment. Well, it's it's not the polls, so we don't have to worry about style points here. Yeah. It's just get into the playoffs and get a home home field advantage, yep. which they're going to have now. The Seahawks losing only one in their region to North, North Charleston. Long kick here. Taken by Jenkins. Jenkins up the sideline, out of bounds. At about the, let's see where they mark it, about the 34-yard line. So, well, decent well, run back by Jenkins. Yeah, you know, I know Frazier just ran for 85 yards, Tim, but we tend to give, as announcers and sport and, uh, people that follow football, a little too much credit to the running backs. I mean, really, uh, you have to look at that offensive that line and the job they're doing. Yeah, that was I all mean, blocking. The perimeter players tend to get all, all the attention. But the importance of your offensive linemen, you just can't stress enough. If the holes weren't there, they wouldn't be running north and south like they are. Looks like a lot of substitutions here on the defense for the Seahawks. Handoff inside. Smith gets two on the play. So that was an 89-yard touchdown run by Lawrence Jenkins. I'm sorry, Lawrence Jenkins. I said Zach Fraser. Can you give us a re recap, Tim? Well, I'll tell you, nothing but huge scores here for the Seahawks. This has not been petty scoring. A 67-yard touchdown pass from, from uh, we got a, well, let's see, we got, a, we got an injury on the field, so we will take a timeout as well here on the Friday Night Football Zone. On WHHI-TV. Been in a wreck? Bring your car to H&H &H Auto Body at 17 Cardinal Road. At H&H &H Auto Body, you'll get a free estimate in their state-of-the-art facility. No matter the damage, the great team at H&H &H Auto Body will have your car looking great and back on the road in no time. Back here on the Friday Night Football Zone, 55-14. Seahawks ahead. Second down run by Combs. Combs with a decent run out six yards. Well, the recap, Homad. Homad, Homad, and Homad. 67-yard <laughs> pass for a touchdown to Michael Fodia. Two 33-yard strikes. Uh... One to Frazier, one to Morrow. 
80-yard strike to Victor Frazier. And then Lawrence Jenkins with his fourth score of the game. That was an 89-yard run to put us where we are now. So, home at home at and home at. That sounds yeah. like a law firm. Yeah. Out of bounds on third and one. So see what the uh, see if the Bobcats can get a first down to keep their drive going here. While we got a second, we want to tell you, I want to remind you, the Low Country Report. Tune in daily at 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. for the Low Country Report with host Jane Jude. This new program in partnership with the Island Packet and Buford Gazette is a source for area information, giving our viewers an overview of what's happening daily. That's the Low Country Report, 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. daily here on WHHI. So fourth down, Bobcats get it. They'll keep their drive going. 8 o'clock, that's about my time for a second cocktail. I like it. I might make that show. Absolutely. We'll watch that. Find out what's going on in the Low Country Shirley other Temples, than sports. Right? Of course. Yes. First and ten. Five minutes and counting until the Seahawks... Put it on the board, their sixth win of the season. They will be the second seed in the region. A home playoff game coming for the Seahawks. Well-timed play broken up by the Seahawks defenders this time. Looking downfield for number 27, it's Jordan Rodriguez. Isn't he the kicker? He is. Plays he is. getting some wide he's receiver. Some, he got, he's got good hands. Um... Just to update you, 17-3 the score at uh, Northwood. So Christian Academy on their way to uh, a region title and uh, possibly a couple home games in the skids of playoffs. Didn't I, say some, didn't I say something about Christian Academy you did. beating Northwood you earlier did. today? You said, you said watch for it. Um, Sergo scores a second rushing touchdown of the night. Hilton Head Christian Academy, 24-3 now lead over Northwood Academy. Huge, huge win for the Eagles. And I'll tell you, an, another decent win for uh, Prep. Prep is going to be in the playoffs. And we said it before, Matt Lehman, rumored to be coming back <laughs> for the playoffs. Uh, their, uh, their substitution, their backup quarterback's done quite well to get them to this point. And they will uh, have either a third or fourth seed there, depending on how things shake out tonight. After that horrific start for Ron Peduzzi's team, a lot of guts there for Prep to get back to where they are. So congratulations to them. Pass here, Powell fighting down inside the 20, down to the nine yard line so a good strike from Combs to Powell. Oh look at Combs set up in the pocket here. Sets his feet waits for his receiver to clear the defenders. Powell comes in makes a catch. Keeps the ball away from his shoulder pad so it doesn't pop out. Makes it with his hands and he takes the ball and breaks open down the field. Nice play by Combs and Powell. And good protection this time. He had time to throw. So time ticking down Four and a half minutes to go here. 55-14. It's been all Seahawks tonight. Seahawks try to get on the board again. Jenkins takes the handoff. He is in the end zone. Let's see. They call it. Touchdown. Desmond Jenkins. Well, let's look at 71. Just bury three defenders at the line of scrimmage. Phillip Scott just does yeoman-like work opening up the running lanes for Desmond for. Uh, Desmond Jenkins. Des Desmond Jenkins. So 55-20 now. Extra point coming for the Bobcats. Jordan Rodriguez on for the kick. Down and it is up. And it is good. So 414 to go here in the game. 55-21. What a game tonight, Chuck. Back and forth, back and forth. 55-21. Take a break here on the Friday Night Football Zone. WHHI-TV. Yeah, I guess there's stars and then there's superstars. Um, I'm bringing value to the team. I think that's what's most important. Hey, most, yeah. You bring my um, dunks? Yeah. Got you right here, baby. Uh, uh. Are you bringing value? 
That's what I'm bringing to the team. Now at McDonald's, get a double cheeseburger extra value meal for only $2.99. That's a 100% all-beef double cheeseburger, a medium fries, and a medium Coke. We get really hungry around here. And when that happens, I go get the food. Back here on the Friday Night Football Zone, Bobcats score to cut it to a 34-point lead. 4.14 to go here in the Bridge Bowl. Been all Seahawks, Chuck, and, and uh, bad news coming in Paris tonight. They lose. Bobcats lose here. Island Packet, our friends at the Island Packet, tweeting, and they are saying that uh, they're understanding, after some reporting here, of the Region 8 uh, a Region 8 Class 3 a tiebreaker is that Battery Creek and Lake Marion are in the playoffs and the Bobcats of Bluffton are out. Just barely out for the second straight year. Wow. It came down and, and that's yeah. where we were unclear. There's five tiebreakers that they go to in these situations when the records are tied. And they go to head to head, and it was a it was a tie. It was impossible to determine there. So they go to a point system awarding wins against the region champion against like likewise opponents. That was a tie as well. So third tiebreaker, they go to season win percentage again. All those schools tied. Fourth tiebreaker, defensive points allowed. And I'm going to tell you what this game right here. Bobcats were, were, had a decent lead on the other two teams going into tonight. And between Battery Creek with their huge win and not giving up, giving up six points there, Bobcats giving up 55 points here, a swing in that tiebreaker in the defensive points allowed, that's going to put the Bobcats out. Wow. Again, that's our understanding. It's not official but between the packet and our understanding of the tiebreaker, looks like the Bobcats are out of the playoffs. So a handoff here on first down to number one, Quinton Smalls. Well, Tim, the, you, got the, you got the substitutes in there finally. Four minutes left of the game. Now we're down to three minutes, and the substitutes are coming on the field with the clean jerseys. Led by Michael Julian, the freshman, the six foot four, 165 pound basketball player playing football as a quarterback. Very talented. We've heard an awful lot about him. We thought at one time he might be one of the quarterbacks who would get a chance to play today. Injury on the field will take a timeout here on the Friday Night Football Zone. On WHHI-TV. Welcome to the Blind Cake Saloon. Come in and enjoy an American upscale bar with the best in dancing, live music, two full bars, Billiards Lounge, and the best bar food in Bluffton. So whether you're coming in to hang out and have a beer, or if you're ready for a night out on the town, come on in and see what the buzz is all about at the Blind Pig Saloon. Back here on the Friday Night Football Zone, Tim Wood, Chuck Zapek. 55-21, time winding down here. Bridge Bowl 4, four straight wins in this series for the Hilton Head Island Seahawks. And if you're just joining us, it's been all Seahawks tonight. Pitch out on first down. Smalls with the run. Been all Seahawks. Jeff Homad, a career night at quarterback. 55-21, the score. Seahawks lock up second place in Region 8, Class 3A. And that will give them a home playoff game next week. Bluffton. Everything went there went against them tonight. It's been worst case scenario. They lose here. They lose big. They give up a lot of points. And on top of that, Battery Creek wins gigantically at Lake Marion. So again, it's our understanding between the Island Packet and and our understanding of the tiebreaker system, that the Bobcats of Bluffton are out of the playoffs. Not official from the South Carolina High School League, but uh, again, our reading of the playoff system. So an unfortunate ending to the season here. We thought this was gonna be a game. It was a game for a while, but 
Bobcat simply could not go punch for punch with the Seahawks. Not tonight, Tim, but good way to put it. So first down here for the Seahawks. Pitch out to Small Smalls. Down near the red zone. Well, breaking news here from the booth. Yes. We've had a great regular season here on the Friday Night Football Zone, and it's safe to say that we will be back next week. We have gotten the official word from director extraordinaire Tom Jenkins that we can say we will be on the air next week as playoff action. We shift to the playoffs here on the Friday Night Football Zone. Wow. Looks like I'm going to have to cancel my vacation to Hawaii. That's unfortunate. I'm willing to do it, though. You know what? If you, uh, I'll take your vacation to Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> I think you've, you've shown that you could definitely hand the, handle the booth one man. Wow. Very uh, amply. Actually, I was planning to go up to Philadelphia Were to you? see the Temple, Ohio game. Uh -huh. Temple, as you know, is undefeated in the, in the MAC conference. I'm, I'm, I got to tell you, I'm a little disappointed. Not a lot of trash talking between you and Tom Jenkins on yeah. this whole World Series thing. Tom, a Yankees <laughs> fan, you a <laughs> Phillies fan, haven't heard it. Have not heard it. You know, Dan Patrick show, I watch them a lot. Yeah. They have some guys that are, that are fighting. And the way they're doing it is they decide by dodgeball. Yes. One of the producers is a Yankees fan, one's a Phillies fan. They go by the, the margin of victory. So last night, for instance, Yankees win by two. So the Yankees guy got two shots at the Phillies guy in dodgeball. And connected on both, a lot of pain. Well, that's a better way to. I, I so agree. You, I should agree we do with dodgeball that. between I agree Chuck with, and, and with Chuck that. And Absolutely, that's better than listening to the Yankee hype machine all all pre all postseason, and uh, listen what they have to say about the series. I like the dodgeball. Now, Tom Jenkins, is, no, Tom, come here, Tom. Tom, you're usually whispering in my ear. <laughs> you you can say this by yourself. World Series is just an opportunity to scout some new talent for next year. <laughs> The Phillies are your that's, your, that's your new farm system. Just sign that outfield from the Philadelphia Phillies, right? <laughs> yeah. All right, so 25.1 seconds to go here. Great work by everybody here on the Friday Night Football Zone tonight as we wind down. Bridge Bowl 4, our second Bridge Bowl on the air, both of them dominated by the Hilton Head Island Seahawks. That may be our last play of the game. 55-21. Thanks to the Hilton Head Island Seahawks staff for hosting us here all season. Thank you to Jeremy West and his staff for all his help. Hilton Head Island Seahawks go to six and four. Four and one in region. And the second place team, they do not defend their region title. But I'll tell you what, four straight wins for the Seahawks. They're going to be tough to deal with in the playoffs. And they will, too. But as we mentioned before, this used to be a combined high school that split up five years ago. The Seahawks went 0-11 and 1-10 and and the next two years. And they've come back and they won four straight Bridge Bowls against a lot of uh, former players. Jeff Homad with four touchdown passes over 30 yards, what including a 67-yard strike and an 80-yard strike. Lawrence Jenkins, four touchdowns on the night, an 89-yard run to put the nail in the coffin in this win. Just a great job by the coaching staff of the Seahawks from Milton Head High and Jeff Homad putting together and executing a, almost a picture-perfect game plan. They, they had the wide receivers advantage with the speed on the outside. They had the running backs. They just had a better balanced offense, and they executed tonight perfectly to score all those points. Hey, listen, plenty of props to Coach Jeremy West and the Bobcats of Bluffton. They finished the season 3-7, and 2-3 and three in region. As we said, it looks like 
Going by the tiebreakers, as we read them, as the Island Packet reads them, it looks like the Bobcats are out of the playoffs. Well, you know, they broke that 11-game losing streak that dated back to eight games last season earlier this year, and they came back and had some impressive victories, and it put them in a position to almost make the playoffs in region play. So a great job by the coaching staff at Bluffton. It's just a shame that uh, the Seahawks were just a better team tonight. Great work by the Bobcats all year. Unbelievable job by Tim Singled and his staff and his players tonight. Seahawks take Bridge Bowl for 55. What's that for? 55 21. <laughs> the final score here from the Hawks Nest. Tim Wood, Chuck Zapek, Friday Night Football Zone. Our regular season is over. We will see you next week for the playoffs on WHHI TV. Have a good night, everybody. Broadcasting live, it's the Friday Night Football Zone, brought to you by your local McDonald's of Bluffton and Hilton Head, only on WHHI-TV. Torque Athletic Club has changed the local fitness landscape forever, and along with Tan Go Tanning, we are the ultimate place to be. With 59 group fitness classes a week and over half a million dollars of brand new equipment, Torque has a juice bar, free childcare, and free membership specials. And sign up for Tan Go Tanning to get state of the art equipment with a wide variety of lotions and membership programs for everyone. Torque Athletic Club and Tan Go Tanning, right near Sea Turtle Cinemas in Bluffton.